just full of books and just feeling so rich in, in, in the worlds before me. And then having that juxtaposed with going to school hungry and seeing my mother work for cents at a time um, really gave me a sense and understanding that there were indeed two Americas out there and that both descriptions were accurate depending on your perspective. You write about landing here in America, and I love it, so I'm going to quote it. I ascended yeah. to adulthood at cruising altitude, which was a metaphor for leaving the people that you loved, leaving the, the life that you knew, leaving your culture, and landing in America. And you really did go from being a child to an adult in a matter of a flight. <laughs> um, what was that like? Talk to me about your early years here. I do think a lot about my parents coming here at 31, barely 30, yes. and having such vivid, real memories of what it was like to be a professor in China and then being here and working at a sweatshop or working at a sushi factory and how, as an adult, from an adult perspective, how very painful it must have been. For a child, you know, I got here and I just assumed everyone in America was kind of hungry all the time and children had to stay quiet a lot and they went to work with their parents and helped out snipping thread at the sweatshop and I just assumed that some, everyone here had some variation of that because children, I think, just tend to assume that their experiences are normal. And I think that helped me a lot, right? Because then I wasn't editorializing, I was just doing whatever was put in front of me. Um, but it was confusing, too, because in China, I had never, ever been alone. My grandparents were there, my uncles were there. Um, and being here and just being with my parents and being so dependent on them and then them being so different given the new demands of life that I couldn't, I was not equipped at all to understand um, was, was really difficult. And then not speaking English felt like I was walking through a fog every day of my life until I started to piece together words and being like, okay, that's, that's what that word means. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. I love where you write about your early childhood, that it was joyful that you were kind of the mayor of your class, that all the little girls came to you to ask what you thought they should do. And then you came here to um, a school where you didn't speak English. They put you in a classroom really all by yourself. Being put in that classroom by myself, though, helped me because you know, there were books around and I found my friends in those books and found a real refuge in those books. It just opened up brand new doors for me and, and it really got the sense from my father too that literacy was the way out of poverty and that was a message that I internalized really early on. Yeah, yeah. I loved the scene where you first found Clifford the big red dog yeah. and then it was the girls from the babysitters <laughs> club and Sweet Valley High who became these companions that you didn't have yeah. and they really opened up a world. Yep. 
And I know that you love Babysitter's Club. Yes, I a lot. Love Babysitter's Club. This, <laughs> <laughs> for years after, I kept trying to start a club and doing some sort of, you know, <laughs> some gardening. Yeah, yeah, something. It didn't work. But, but that idea of loyalty and friendship and belonging and also understanding what America was like outside of New York City, mm -hmm. outside of the inner city, it really opened my eyes up to, oh, like in a place in Connecticut, there's grass and lawns and people walk to school with their friends and their school buses. And it was a world where my biggest concern was doing my homework and getting to my baby babysitting job. Like I fully pre pretended that I was one of the babysitters um, and it just felt so safe. Yeah. yeah. You know, that safety is a word that I kept thinking about because as an undocumented child, your life was filled with fear. Uh, even when your mom was so sick that you had to call 911 or she possibly could have died, right. you were scared to pick up that phone. Yeah. Talk about the fear and what it's like to be a child under that fear. I think children pick up a lot of the emotional energy of their parents and their households. So for me, it was almost I didn't, I didn't think of it, you know, consciously as fear. It was just soaking up whatever my parents were sending my way. And I just learned to be extremely cautious, to turn and look over my shoulder. If there was someone in uniform, anyone in uniform, even a sanitation worker, I would pivot and walk the other way. It just became ingrained in me that caution was number one. Number two was not being noticed at all, not seeking out the resources. And that's an issue I'm sure millions of undocumented people still deal with today, um, you know, even with, with getting the vaccine. When I went to get my shot recently and they asked me for my ID, my first instinct was to pivot and run. It was, it was just like that. And it was that childhood instinct, I think, never leaves you. And you can talk to it and soothe it and, and have it take its place where, where it belongs. But I think it will always be somewhat a part of me. There's a scene in this where your mom says, I published two books. I'm a published author. And then she comes here to work for pennies in shops. What was that like to witness your parents go through that? It was really difficult. It made me want to protect her at an age where I did not know how. At the same time though, both my parents still carried the sense of dignity and pride. And it came not in the form of, I'm not going to do this work, it's beneath me. It's not, it's not that kind of pride. It was, I will do this and I will overcome this and this is not going to stop me. And my mom, you know, every night before going to the sweatshop would put curlers in her hair as if she was going to the university to teach. She would dress as nicely as we could possibly afford to, to do. And she, she kept her head held high and that was what gave me hope that her spirit was not broken and as bad as anything got as hungry as I got my mother always said it's temporary and and I think that perspective that she had from having been in China and having seen the heights of, of China and then coming down here and see, seeing the lows of America kind of gave her the perspective that nothing is permanent as long as you can um, keep your head up and keep moving forward so I, I, don't, I don't think I could have asked for more inspiration mm -hmm. than seeing my mother go through that. How did you get through some of the hardships as a seven-year-old? The books were a huge part, just throwing myself into reading. And in part, at the be in the beginning, it was just a matter of practicality. My dad said, if you speak English without an accent, you'll be accepted and you'll be an American and people won't question where you're from and when you moved here maybe they wouldn't suspect us of being undocumented. So that was my goal, just to be as fluent as any white person. But I just found myself loving these books. The other was teachers. I mean, I had teacher Miss Pong mm -hmm. in third grade. She was just inspired so much in me. I mean, she gave me Charlotte's Web, which I still have to this day. but. She just gave me this sense of home and warmth. And I think that's what happens to immigrant children when they move far away from family, is that you, you tend to find family figures everywhere. You applied on your own as a young girl to a talented and gifted middle school, even when 
your teacher said, like, that's not possible. What, where, where did that come from? I think my ignorance at the time really helped. I didn't, had no idea of the students I would be going to school with or that I was competing against to get into school. Um, and I had no idea how behind I was. Like, so I just assumed, okay, people, that girl has a Tamagotchi, that girl has a Barbie doll. They have a little more than me, but I assume they live in the same exact type of home that I did. And that really helped me because I was a little bit blind to everything else that I was competing against. Um, and I think in life, it probably helps to be a little bit foolish uh, because you never know. And then you went on to graduate from Yale Law School. What was that moment like? Surreal. I could not believe it was happening, much like this book. I cannot believe it's happening. It's, you know, I have to say that I also have a lot of privilege, right? My parents were educated in China, and that helped me a lot, even if they didn't have the jobs that educated people necessarily have in the U.S. The way they thought about things, the way that they cultivated reading and thinking um, and debating at home really helped me and sent me forward. And I have a lighter skin color than most people of color. That has helped me. And I don't have an accent by no, I mean, there are children who come here at the same age as me and they have an accent. I, I, it's inexplicable to me why I have these privileges. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast, free wherever you get your podcasts. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Good morning, welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> 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 The Meet the Press Chuck Todd Cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Stay connected and stream the news you need with Xfinity X5. Our top story is unfolding right now. The fast speed you depend on and the reliable connection for all your devices, whenever and however you watch with Xfinity X5. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. And what do you think it meant, like, when you were walking across that stage? Did your mom, did her story, did her staying up late at night studying, even while she was suffering with the sickness, did, um, did you picture her and the other women who were working in freezing temperatures, cutting sushi or sewing buttons? Oh, did their stories come to your mind? For sure. And not just when I walked across the stage with a mortarboard. It followed me all seven years of higher education. When I got into college, I was thrown into a different world. I had no idea that schools like Andover existed, for instance, or people like to ride horses. I just had no insight into that world. And I felt so lonely. And it was incredibly difficult emotionally. I was also working four or five jobs throughout college. And there were days when I wanted to give up, but then I remembered my mother sitting at that sewing machine for three cents a piece, sewing labels onto each piece of clothing after she had published textbooks and was a respected professor of math. And I said, if she could do that, I can do this. I mean, this is nothing to complain about. And it's, it's funny because there's this whole narrative in American discourse about Asian parents being really strict and pushing children. 
My parents were the complete opposite of that. So there's a, a famous term, tiger mom now. I think of my mom as the panda mom because in high school she gave me a stack of sick notes and she said, just use it whenever you want. Just whenever you want to skip school. I don't, I don't care when, just do it. And my dad would call me when I was in college Saturday nights and I'd answer, of course, because I'd be working or studying. He said, why aren't you out at a party? I don't hear any music in the background. Go to, par go to a party, any party. And I was like, I don't want a party. He's like, just go. <laughs> <laughs> they, I, they probably wanted the, the fun and the freedom yeah. and that maybe wasn't afforded to them and when they arrived here. Do you feel like that's what it was? For sure. And I think they carry a lot of guilt about uh, my childhood. My dad gave such an impassioned speech at my wedding in 2019. I had never heard him say these words before because, again, we never acknowledged those years. It just was not talked about. And he said she had a really difficult childhood and if we could do it over we would do everything completely differently and that just broke my heart because they gave me everything they possibly could have um, given the very limited resources they had and I think if if nothing comes from this book but for them to feel a sense of healing and forgiveness for themselves that would be my biggest dream come true and have they, have they read it? I have not allowed them to yet. <laughs> <laughs> they have been asking, but I just, um, you know, they're still afraid. My, my mother's a citizen, my dad is, has a green card. They still think ICE is going to come after us. And uh, that trauma really stays with you. And there are moments when I think, what am I doing? I'm going to get all of us deported we're all just gonna get deported because of me, and I was foolish. I was a little too foolish this time. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, boom. That's your shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. And you've said before that this is your story, but it's the story of so many others. And that it was a story that you were ashamed of, that you didn't even tell friends. And after um, the election in 2016, you decided that you could no longer stay silent, that that voice that said you must stay silent, you must not take up space, went away. Yeah, that's right. And I think the timing of the 2016 election really woke me up because I had become a citizen just four months before in May. And I remember walking to the courthouse and being sworn in and then President Obama was on a video screen and said my fellow Americans and those words just meant so much to me to be called an American was not something I even thought about as needing but when it was said to me by the President of the United States it gave me a validation that I had been searching for for 30 years and then when the election came and the national discourse just took a real turn, I found myself 
for the first time to be in a position of real privilege. And it's true what they say, as I'm sure you know and you've lived, Jenna, that with privilege comes a lot of responsibility to speak up for those who aren't able to. And I finally felt safe to share the story and not worry about ice banging down my door, although sometimes I still have that thought. But I know that there are people out there who cannot do that. And it was then no longer my story or my choice to keep it a secret. This is bigger than me. And that message came to me loud and clear mm -hmm. after that, that 2016 election. You know, there's something super powerful about the fact that you found a life in books. You found friends and places you maybe never got to even visit. And now <laughs> your life is written about in this book, that you get to share your story when for so many years you were told not to share who you were, yeah. that it was shameful even who you were. There's something really beautiful about that. You're right. I hadn't thought about it that way. But as you were saying that just now, I was thinking that Southern California always felt like a second home to me because the Sweet Valley twins, <laughs> Elizabeth and Jessica Wakefield, <laughs> live there. And I just feel a natural connection to that place. And I do hope that people through my book will feel a real connection to New York City, to Brooklyn, to Manhattan, to the magic of Fifth Avenue during the holidays, mm. all of these little unique New York moments, even on the subway. and in Chinatown, um, that, that it can bring New York City to life for them like the Sweet Valley Twins mm -hmm. did for me for California. And it did for me, it was so fun to read about yeah. that and how your parents found these little moments of joy amidst the m hardship for you, like, the, like your mom taking you to see those holiday windows yeah. and the magic of New York. Um, I wonder what you would, I wonder what you would say to your seven eight-year-old self? I would tell her that it is not her fault because I think it's really human nature but especially natural for a child to blame herself for everything that if there's a shift in your parents if they don't no longer all of a sudden have time for you when before they had all the time in the world to play with you and make you a kite and fly it with you and then now they just don't even have time to talk to you, you think you did something wrong. It's, it's completely natural. So reminding her that it's, it's not her fault and reminding her as, as my mother did, so I need to say this less, you can get through this and you will. Mm -hmm. There is another side to it. I, um, I think most people would think that when you got those prestigious degrees, you were living the American dream. Were you and are you now? I definitely was not. I think it's very dangerous when you get everything you work for materially because you all of a sudden become aware of everything that is lacking mm. emotionally, psychologically. I was so divorced from who I really was from the child I was, everything that came naturally to me, all my natural instincts were tamped down because I had to be cautious and I had to keep everything a secret. And I just, I remember, you know, going to work in this fancy office with my fancy briefcase and suit and coming home to this fancy apartment in Manhattan, looking myself in the mirror and just not knowing who I was. I had everything that the American dream told me that I was to go for and it wasn't enough, then what else is there, right? What, what is the key? And it took me a lot of time, a lot of therapy, a lot of thinking and reading my old diaries and crying to understand that real success is not material wealth, which is so easy to easily portrayed as in American culture. Of course, it's easier to find the success I'm thinking of, which is a connection to your true self, when you are not worrying about money, right? But that's, that's necessary, but not sufficient. For me, the American dream that I'm living now is being really honest about who I am. I'm the same person here as I am at home. I feel I can finally say no shame mm -hmm. about my childhood. 
I feel only love for that child who was hungry and sad and sometimes a little petty. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel, I, I, I cried with her, I laughed with her, and I feel a closure, both a closure and a connection to my childhood. And understanding that my childhood has really shaped who I am deep down and continues to guide me. And most of all, that my instincts are to be listened to, that they are the thing that guides me to where I'm supposed to be in life. And that I would have, could have never dreamed for myself because I didn't know that was a thing to do, nor could I have understood that I would be able to find this beauty. So writing this book itself has been, for me, how I define it, the real American dream. Yeah, this right here yeah. is the dream. Even if it hadn't been published, and I'm lucky that it is, and it's, you know, it's, it's being received. If I had just written that story, if I had been able to get to a place emotionally, psychologically, to live those experiences again, heal through those experiences, and write this down, just to pass it down to my children and grandchildren, that would have been the American dream. Today, all day, we've got a great show for you on this Wednesday morning, including an all-day exclusive chat you can only see here. Let's kick it off with Pop Start. We check in with Carson, who's covering all the buzzy headlines, including some happy news for John Mulaney and girlfriend Olivia Munn. Time for the best part. What yes. Is it? yeah. It's yes. Pop Start time. Well, it's not the results of the food bracket at the end of the Pop Start. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. just the first round, though. First round, Elite Eight. We're down now to four. <laughs> uh, More on that in a minute. We're going to start today. Wings. John Mulaney and Olivia Munn. Last night, the stand-up comedian stopped by Late Night with Seth Meyers to give an update on what he's been up to lately. And after a difficult year in which Mulaney went through a divorce, battled substance abuse, and is now living in recovery, he did have some good news to share. Then in the spring, I went to Los Angeles and uh, uh, met and started to date a wonderful woman named Olivia. Who I know well. Yes, a you lovely know lovely woman. Olivia Munn very well. And we're having a baby together. Thanks. Aww. So John Mulaney and Olivia Munn are expecting baby number one. Nice. Big news That's and congratulations sweet. to them. Next up, Blue's Clues. It's been 25 years since the Nickelodeon series starring Steve and his buddy Blue hit the small screen and to celebrate the big milestone, the original host of the first four seasons, Steve Burns, took to social media to share a sweet message to the kids who grew up with him. I mean, we started out with clues and now it's what? Student loans and... Um, jobs and families and some of it has been kind of hard you know i guess i just wanted to say that after all these years i never forgot you ever and i'm super glad we're still friends thanks for listening he hasn't, he hasn't changed at all. Oh, no, he God. looks exactly That's Steve. the same. He did the show wow. in 2002. 2002 is when he left. Yeah. That's wow. when I was at TRL at MTV. It's in the Viacom building. So right. the, yeah. they're in the same building. It's yeah. Steve all the time. 2002, <laughs> yeah. he went to college and yeah. left the show. <laughs> but he went to embark on a music career. But his oh, wow. voice and his I, presence he, is still just as yeah. soothing as oh, well. crazy. I used to watch crazy. that with, Bring it with back, Courtney. Steve. Yeah. Run it back. She was a little one. And I so mail call. Yeah. Salt and pepper. Yeah. You can send that to Courtney. Oh my so God, she sees I'm, going to. I'm going to. You should just stick around, by the way. In the third hour, Dylan's going to have a lot more on the 25th anniversary of Blue's Clues. Cool. And finally, our tailgating food bracket. Oh, yeah, Let's yeah, get yeah. to it. Yeah. All right, thousands of you went online yesterday to cast your vote for the best game day snack with football starting tomorrow. Let's take a look at the results. Go. No shocker there. Loaded nachos. Of course. Crushing of course. soft of course. pretzels. Yes. Not even a crush. 77 oh, wow. of the vote. Wings made Sorry, Savannah. But the buffalo wings, or as you call them, yes. bones with sauce, <laughs> yeah. have proven they are dominant, yeah. beating out chili. It's a bowl of soup. They will be heading to the semifinals. The Across the board, take a look. The great battle of cheese, mozzarella sticks, you took down cheese, cheese fries. Yes. No, no. 59% of, of the vote. Wait, yeah. cheese fries are out. Cheese fries are out. They're disgusting. Oh, that, was, that was a pick, though. That was a pick. They're disgusting. 
<laughs> well, well fry in any variety is no, I think if the fry is soggy, thick enough to hold up, it's a if mess. It, that would make a difference. Yeah, please. Like a twice fried <laughs> fry no. can hold up the no. nacho sauce. How Maybe can you it be like, like fine, I don't but like they're cheese soggy. fries, but you like mozzarella sticks? Well, because they're fr they're fried, they're crunchy. Yeah, you know? they're cheese. So yeah, they're cheese, cheese fries. Look, if there was twice based potato skins yeah. with cheese. Also, the mozzarella stick is like a distant cousin to the pizza, really. I mean, exactly. Because you get the sauce. You dip it in the sauce. Right. It's a different thing. It's a meal and a snack. I love you more every day. Last but not least, people just can't say no to the classic cheeseburger. Of course. Just yeah. whooping up on cheesesteaks, 72%. I think we're going with like a cheeseburger loaded nachos final year. Yeah. That's like UNC Duke way. back in the day. That's a, who was going to win over nachos and cheeseburger? Well, wait, how, wings are, how, wings how are, are going doing? all the way. Maybe wings is, is an perfect. upset. Your That's my bracket. Wings are going all the way. I feel is like that, wings loses steam down the stretch when nope. we do these things. Oh, I don't no, know no. why. Al, is that your bracket? That's my bracket. Esther, you're out. I actually voted for bones with sauce because I knew <laughs> I wanted to be right. Um, but I think every time you say win. that and, and you're blasphemous about wings, an angel loses <laughs> their wings. Yeah. How <laughs> dare you? Wouldn't that be great if an angel actually had chicken wings? Yeah. Bones <laughs> with sauce. Well, they'd sauce. be bony. They'd be bony and not delicious. Not if you got my wings. Uh, okay. I'm bring you some <laughs> will you bring me some wings? I will. That's, that's what we Let's, need to do. Yeah. Should Make do sure you should do it. Because you have bad your, wings. Your past with buffalo wings scares me. That you've had such a bad relationship with wings for so long in your life. Go it's nachos. Like, it's like the you bad boyfriend. This. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it is. Go wings. See, you're now married to happens. the best wings ever. That's Mike true. That's true. I, that's true. <laughs> that's true. That's right. How do we get into delicious that? Wings. I don't even Where know. We we just cast the vote. Yeah. Go to today.com slash food. Coming up on Today Talks, Dylan celebrates the 25th anniversary of the award-winning children's show, Blue's Clues. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back. Today in the third hour, can you believe that the beloved children's show, Blue's Clues, is turning 25? Dylan caught up with all three hosts from the show's run to help celebrate the milestone. Take a look. I had the chance to catch up with all three hosts from the show's quarter century run to hear their memories and find out about working with Blue. <laughs> September 8th, 1996. Hi out there, it's me, Steve. Have you seen Blue, my puppy? <laughs> Nickelodeon unleashed a brand new children's show. Blue's Clues. Featuring a puppy named Blue, who would leave behind clues for her owner, Steve, as well as little viewers everywhere. Steve, did you know how big of an impact it would have and, and how long it would be around for? I mean, we're celebrating the 25th anniversary. No. <laughs> I mean, even when we were shooting the pilot. Here's the mail, oh. it never fails. Oh. I thought it was too weird to work. There's a clue. We were trying to get the home viewer to actually play along and solve a problem with me. And then when it not only worked, but really worked, that was certainly a surprise to me. We just figured out Blue's Clues. Steve Burns earned his stripes, serving as the first host of Blue's Clues for six years. You know what we need? Our handy dandy. Before passing the famed handy dandy notebook to Joe, played by Donovan Patton. Hello. My daughter, when she was young, wanted to watch Blue's Clues. She said, I want to watch that at Joe, but with Steve. <laughs> Which I, I kind of love. 
Are you ready to watch the movie? After four years of playing Joe, Pat now works behind the scenes of Blue's Clues and You. Everybody's looking for Blue's Clues. A reboot introducing a new generation to Blue. And the show's third host, Josh Dela Cruz, the first Asian American to fill the role. It's one of Blue's Clues. My very first clue. Josh, how does that feel to be the one to reach that milestone? Growing up, I never saw any characters on screen that I identified with. And I hope that I'm able to help inspire kids that even if they don't see themselves reflected, that doesn't mean that they can't achieve whatever it is they want. The trio of hosts now joining forces to star in an upcoming original Blue's Clues film. Blue first asked us to play. Along with a music video full of some familiar faces. You can't spell blue without you. All in celebration of Blue's 25th birthday. That's 175 in dog years, by the way. Talking about Blue, how does she stay so youthful looking? You know what I heard? Bow talks. <laughs> That's what I heard. Oh. This show is known for its catchy tunes. We are going to the kitchen. We just got an email. I mean, how often do you find yourselves, you know, at the grocery store, just walking around town, and these songs are just stuck in your head? All the time. There was about five years of my life where I wanted to forget some of those melodies. We just got a letter. We just got a letter. But could not. You know, I'd be like, I am doing a thing now, and I'm singing this song. Stop, 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 stop. Speaking of music, Steve, I know you're also a singer-songwriter. One of your songs actually became the theme song for Young Sheldon. We can't help but ask here at the Today Show, is there any way you could create a new theme song for us? I think the third hour of today needs it. Today is the day that you're watching the show. It's today after yesterday. But today. I love it. Genius. I, I don't know oh, if that great. one's going to get stuck in your head as much. As, <laughs> it's funny. I had Calvin help me do the research for this show, and, and uh, now he is just beyond obsessed. Oh. Like, it's all we watch in the house. Oh, awesome. Um, and also, in honor of the anniversary, Nickelodeon is partnering with the global, global nonprofit organization Save the Children. And this morning, fans are feeling extra nostalgic because Steve put out this sweet video telling all the Ooh, show's loyal viewers he never forgot them. Aww. So you want to just Google that and try to find that video because it's really cool and you can catch Blue's Clues and you weekdays at 11 a.m. on Nickelodeon. I sent it to Courtney. Oh, really? And she said, oh, I watched it last night. It's oh, so sweet. Because so he sweet. talks to the adults as if as he were talking to them as yep. kids. So what a what special, to be a special place, or you hold sure. a special place in everybody's heart. Yes. You know what I mean? That's really cool. I know, for so long. Coming up on Hoda and Jenna, my September pick for Read with Jenna Book Club. Don't miss it. Stay connected and stream the news you need with Xfinity X5. Our top story is unfolding right now. The fast speed you depend on. We begin with breaking news right now in Florida. And a reliable connection for all your devices. This story matters to all of us. Whenever and however you watch. A bite-sized mix of everything you love about all four hours of our show, but half the calories. Oh, oh yes. With Xfinity X5. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts.
Good morning. Welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are. <laughs> 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 Welcome back. Today on Hoda and Jenna, a new month means a new page turner for my Read with Jenna book club. Hoda and I talked about why I chose the amazing memoir, Beautiful Country, by Chen Julie Wong. Take a look. It's Wednesday. It's September 8th. Hot day. It's a beautiful, sunny, oh. sparkly day here in New York, and we want to send our sunshine your way, because I know a lot of folks are going through different things, and this carefree tune we're listening to right now is called Who Cares? Oh. by Phil Moore. I like Perfect, it, right? right? Who cares? Mm -hmm. Let's play that every yeah. morning. So shout out to our friend Ashley down in Raleigh, yeah. North Carolina. Enjoy every minute with baby Jack. How cute oh. is he? Thank you for watching and send your videos to hodaandjenna.com. I just want to say congratulations. <laughs> Jenna dropped an entire coffee. On, she had a white dress that's borrowed from our friend Savannah. Savannah. And you did the whole thing and not one drop on that white dress. That's just old makeup. That's oh no there is. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no. Nope. That's I, something else. I believe that's something else. <laughs> Today on the... But um, you know what? There are two types of people. There are people who get a stain and get obsessed. It's like, have you ever seen someone, like, when you have a stain, you, someone will say, you have a stain, you're like, okay, and they're like, mm -hmm, it's just right. Yeah, and, just, yeah, yeah. and, and Hoda and I don't, <laughs> don't care. Don't care. Couldn't care less. But I do feel like I jinxed myself, because this morning, Savannah brought this to me, and I was like, great. Awesome. I could use Thank something. You. Thank you. I'm yeah. glad you didn't like it on yeah. you. Yeah. And then she said, and Carson, this morning, yeah. and the eight o'clock said, well, do you have to give it back? Yeah. And I said, well, the one way you yeah. don't have to give it back, and yeah. this isn't, I was kind of kidding, but I've done it yeah. before. Remember I spilled yeah. red, I spit red wine yeah. on her white pants once. <laughs> <laughs> is that you spill on it and then all this then you huge own coffee. It. And you but own we it. feel like something is in the environment because this morning, do you want to say what happened to no, you? No, I just, I, I dropped a t an entire venti tea on our <laughs> brand new set sparkly downstairs and everyone looked, usually everyone's laughing and it was silent because you know when you really mess up, yes. then people get silent. But I do think there are two types of people for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, people who will immediately after you get a stain they're like let me get that and they get a tide stick and they're all on you and you're like I'm okay I'll just matter. wash it later and I still remember I'm just remembering this this is so weird Joel and I were at a restaurant and Joel spilled something on him and the lady the waitress was one of those <laughs> just hold on hold on hold on she got a napkin and I'm not kidding you we still talk about it she put it inside his shirt she took a <laughs> cup of sparkling, whatever that is, seltzer, water. seltzer yeah. water. She goes, seltzer works like this. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Joel was sitting there. It was like a wet t-shirt contest. I was looking at Joel, and we still, every time we, we talk about it, it was like he was soaked, like, through his clothes, and he kept saying, thank you, I think I'm good. She was like, no, just a little more scrubbing. And she kept scrubbing it until I think it was out. It was so Have you weird. ever had the person, and I've had this, what? and I've also been this what? with what? my children, that spits a little on their finger and then rubs. Like, I've had a person to me been like, wait, hold on, hold on, it's right there. And spit a little and then rub it on my shirt. Like, that's better, that's than, better than, than leaving chocolate. the food. Leave it alone. Yeah, just let it go. All right. Well, okay, we love this TikTok. Yeah. You yeah. know, we're TikTok influencers. By the way, we have a big TikTok person on our show. Yes. Addison Ray is going to be with Any us. Any of y'all that have kids that love. Tell them, you're going to be cool. Yes. Once they Say, know hey, that come you, on in. Yeah. Or just tape the show and show them mm -hmm. later. But anyway, there was this viral TikTok from an employee in Silicon Valley. So this guy named Kevin really, really, really wanted to go to the Raiders game. Okay, preseason game last weekend. So we called out sick from work. Look, there he said. Hey, Kev, hope hey, you're boss. feeling better. Take the day. You feeling better? I need the day. So the bottom line is, it's hard to see. That happened quickly. <laughs> His boss sees him in a cutaway on TV. Thanks, man. Grabs a screenshot I'm okay, just, just relaxing. relaxing. Are, Are you, you sure? sure? Looks, Looks like, like you have, have a twin. twin. Caught your ugly. Oh, then there was some other stuff. Okay, so um, it, this this brings up the question: <laughs> When you get busted, when you tell someone you can't go out because yes. dot dot dot, and then you and go then out anyway. And then all of a sudden, have you ever been busted where you remember the bus? I re well, I I don't like vividly, but I have I do it often, so I do remember saying I can't do something, and then sitting in a restaurant and the person walking by, and you're just like this. 
oh my god, the babysitter called at the last minute and she couldn't come. And you're like, oh my gosh, my hands in the cookie jar. I feel so oh, crummy. Wait, what happened? My Tell biggest me. bust yeah, was go. when I was 15. Oh god. I had a boyfriend uh, that was older and named Blake Gottesman. Sorry, okay. Blake. Okay. And my mom said, well, you're not allowed on car dates. Sorry, okay, you can't, can't go car. on car Got dates. It. You can go out with them, but you cannot drive in the car with them. And I okay. said, okay. So we went to the Austin High Maroon football game. Okay. We how, were at. How did you get there? You walked. I, I, my mom dropped me so, off. Okay. Like okay. the nerd that I was. <laughs> yes. And Blake met me there. Okay. And then at some point we had to like, I can't remember what, but it was honest. Like we had to like go get his car mm -hmm. for a minute. A minute. So a minute. we're in his car and I look over and my mom <gasps> is with her, my godmother, oh, no. Reagan Gammon, and they just look out the window and they go, busted. <laughs> I mean, what is the chance to drive up next to your mother in the car who busted me? They yelled out busted. I was so <gasps> did embarrassed. You freak out? Oh yeah, I was like oh. Were they kind of laughing busted or did they, they busted. Oh, busted? Oh like, like that. Kind of, but kinda of laughing. But also it was before <laughs> the times of cell phones. So there was like it I was left with the bust. <laughs> and then you were gone. And I had to stew in my bust <laughs> until my mom picked me up when the game was over. <laughs> what did you get punishment or just no, I think know. like yeah. yeah maybe what grounded were you doing? I yeah. think I was grounded for like a week but my parents were pushovers There's, did you do you ever call did you ever call in sick to work and just say you can't make it no you never done that you know. have you well, I've done it like a mental health day before. Do you know you what it's called? Feel it's like... called call in well. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? Is that work? You call in well. Like, you call in well to go to a, you, he wasn't, Kelvin wasn't sick. He just wanted to go to the game. I so know. he called in well. I know, but you're going to get, most bosses Busted. don't let you call in well. Busted. Oh. So you guys, Jenna, you always pick great books. And I know you're good at picking. No question. This one, though, has us talking. We've, we, we have not stopped talking about it since you introduced it at 8 o'clock. And, and, and we introduced it, and the piece that you're going to see a little later shows you some. But this uh, pick for September, which I just love, is Beautiful Country. It's by Chen Julie Wong. It is a powerful memoir about growing up as an undocumented immigrant in America. And I sat down with Chen Julie to talk about her story, uh, what it means to have the American dream, to live this life. This story is so full of mm, family love, mm. of, of grit, of resilience, and it was so meaningful. I got to go back to our old neighborhood with mm. her and walk around. I mean, what she reveals as she puts her heart out to you, it's a beautiful book. I literally could not wait. Chen Julie Wong's life forever changed at age seven when her family moved to America from China. You write about landing here in America, and I love it, so I'm gonna quote it. I ascended to adulthood at cruising altitude. When we stepped foot out of JFK was when I realized that my life was going to be completely different. In China, I was just a normal kid, running around, screaming, dancing, and in Meiguo, America, I was to stay quiet and not be noticed at all. Meiguo, the Chinese word for America, translates directly to beautiful country. It's the title of her debut book, a powerful and eye-opening memoir about growing up undocumented in America. Back then in China, no one had a real understanding of what America was like. My uncle said, Oh, the streets are paved with gold, you'll be so rich. Having that juxtaposed with going to school hungry and seeing my mother work for cents at a time really gave me a sense and understanding that there were indeed two Americas out there. Chen Julie spent her evenings working with her mom at a sweatshop, snipping thread for pennies. But during the day, elementary school in New York City's Chinatown proved to be even more challenging. Not speaking English felt like I was walking through a fog every day of my life. They put you in a classroom really all by yourself in some ways. There wasn't a teacher who was teaching you. Being put in that classroom by myself, though, helped me because, you know, there were books around and I found my friends in those books and found a real refuge in those books. And it was through those children's books that Chen Julie ultimately taught herself English. I loved the scene where you first found Clifford, the big red dog, yeah. and then it was the girls from the Babysitter's Club who became these companions that you didn't have. I fully pre pretended that I was one of the babysitters, and it just felt so safe. 
But her family faced a medical crisis when her mom needed emergency gallbladder surgery. She made it to the hospital just in time, but it was a moment in which Chen Julie felt she had nowhere to turn. As an undocumented child, your life was filled with fear. Uh, even when your mom was so sick that you had to call 911 or she possibly could have died, right. you were scared to pick up that phone. Yeah. I didn't think of it, you know, consciously as fear. I just learned to be extremely cautious to turn and look over my shoulder. If there was someone in uniform, even a sanitation worker, I would pivot and walk the other way. It just became ingrained in me that caution was number one. Chen Julie kept the stories from her first years in America secret for nearly 20 years. Despite the incredible challenges she faced, Chen Julie went on to graduate from Yale School of Law and is now a managing partner at a law firm in New York City. She became a U.S. citizen in 2016. Most people would think that when you got those prestigious degrees, you were living the American dream. I definitely was not. I remember going to work in this fancy office and coming home to this fancy apartment in Manhattan, looking myself in the mirror and just not knowing who I was. I had everything that the American dream told me that I was to go for. And it took me a lot of time to understand that real success is not material wealth, which is so easily portrayed as in American culture. The American dream that I'm living now is being really honest about who I am and understanding that my childhood has really shaped who I am deep down and continues to guide me. So writing this book itself has been, for me, how I define it, the real American dream. Wow. And this wow. book is just oh. so powerful. She's an incredible writer, so she surely is living her dream. Today Talks continues after the break. Hoda and I have an exclusive chat you can only see here on Today All Day. Good morning, welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> <bad inside. laughs> It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. <laughs> Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Welcome back to Today Talks and our exclusive content you can only see here on Today All Day. We're eating a burrito. <laughs> We're eating a burrito, but we had the most fun show today. I love today. Because I we did today. everything, right? Okay, let's start. Let's begin. So we started with our chat, which we love. Yeah, we always like to talk. And then we had Samantha Boardman on, and she talked about empty nesters, which was great just about life changes yes. and how to deal with them. That's important. You know what? And then she, what happened? She um, has this great thing about micro stressors that, like, it isn't the traumatic moments are really hard, but what really can kind of grind you are the everyday little, little things. Little bits and pieces, like, yes. Like, if you let it get to you, like, if, if you're like, oh, I spilled, now I did this, if you... You have to somehow mm -hmm. take those micro stresses yeah. and sort of put them away, like you're putting that burrito <laughs> away right now, <laughs> and turn it into strengths, you know? And she, I liked her new book. It was really cool. How do you do that? Like, how do you take, if, you, if you're bugged by little things Well, all you day have long. to, first of all, address it. Uh -huh. Like, why yeah. am I bugged by this? Right. Kind why of is this get to me? the root of it and mm -hmm. then s make a switch, mm -hmm. which she writes all about how to do it. I'm not, a, I can't tell you, but. I think that's important. I tried to, I played a head game. I had something that was scheduled and the person was really late. And you know how that dr grinds yes. me? I did a whole let it go thing. I said, you know what? I'm going to be here. 
I'm going to take, what can I do in this yes. time? I, l I filled the time yes. with things that I needed to do. Yeah. So it wasn't like I was sitting around because nothing makes you stew more than well, exactly. sitting and waiting. And also then when you got together or did whatever you were going to do, you weren't like mm -mm. meeting with anger. You were yes. meeting with what you would yes. have had. Yes. So we did that, which so, we liked. And, and then uh, Addison Ray yes. was here. And she is a TikTok star. If y'all, I don't know if you guys know or you, I'm sure you do or your kids do if you don't, but she, by the way, talk about one of the nicest people. Yes. She gave her phone number to Donna. I know. Now Donna's going to be stalking her. I know, Donna. but that that's how nice, what? No, you're fab, but you are fab. But, no, but I'm just saying, anyone who gives a phone number, like, how yeah. long did it take you to get Oprah's? How many meetings did you have? Uh, to have? At least one or two. You got it after one? No, I'm just two? kidding. I'm, that's not true. No, a long time. You had to cultivate it, and then she finally gave it to you. Yeah, remember? and she didn't give it to me. It's like she asked for my number from somebody, and then, and then I got it. Then she texted you. Yeah. yeah. That was one of the best days of my life. <laughs> Thank you for taking me back. No, but, but it she was, was so cool and um, and sweet and humble. I loved, and I loved how Samantha Boardman was like, oh my God, it's Addison <laughs> Ray. I think it's so You know what's so I love funny? the Today Show for that reason. Well, exactly. And also, we haven't had those moments because people haven't been here. Yes. So to have those kind of intersecting moments were things that we probably took for granted before. And now yes. we're like, Yes. Oh my God, we're remember? in awe. And I now know. we're eating a burrito. Life is just bad. I know. It was good. And now we realize it's all these tiny things that we never paid much attention yes. to because they happen daily. It's like anything. To appreciate it. Yes. It's like when there's a, fa a faucet in front of you and it's dripping water just a little bit, you put your hands under it. If it's flooding, you're like, you yes. back up, it's too much. Like sometimes we just got to remember just Aren't to- are we so it. lucky? My gosh. I feel like, and I'm that burrito, I really can't get it out of my mind. It was, but even like we used to take food for granted. We would eat it and not now even think about- Now when there's food, we're like, oh my food, God, There's a, a breakfast burrito, day. which is my favorite food. And by the way, Anthony made a killer burrito, which is going to be on our show. Later. We're, we're saving it for Friday, I think, or what, whenever it was. It doesn't whenever, matter. But it's the worth. point is, you're going to want to make the recipe because it was delish. And even we can make it. Well, All right, that's, that's going to do it for this episode That's of Today it. Talks. Keep watching for more of Today All Day. Goodbye. Bye. Take that burrito. Okay, I'll just have one last bite. Thanks for doing this, man. Thanks for having me. Having, I'm having, having you. We're in your we're joint in right my now. My joint right now. This is Ray's. I used to have a bar, I used to bartend just a couple blocks from here at a place called Vaughn. So I bartended there for years and years, and then other places, et cetera, when I was first coming up in New York. And so it was nice to have a place where I could go behind the bar again. Now, what's the vibe you wanted to create? We kind of wanted to create like sort of a hometown bar. Yeah. You know what I mean? Every city has a great hometown bar that is kind of like a local spot. And this place actually is that too. Once we opened it, we already amassed a great bunch of locals, also some tourists and things like that. But, but we like it to be mostly neighborhood people, you know? Familiar faces. And walking distance for you, you can just walking pop distance, in. I can pop in whenever I want, bolt right over and meet people. You get back here with the gun I and do, meets and yeah. drinks and everything? I, do. I mean, I was never that, like, you know, Tom Cruise cocktail <laughs> guy, um, you know, throwing decanters behind my back or anything like that. This is the kind of bar where basically no drink takes more than about 20, 25 seconds to make. Right. And if you want something fancy, you can go somewhere else. It's more of a shot in a beer kind of place. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 And how have you guys been doing through the pandemic? Um, we've done okay. We've managed to keep most of our staff completely employed. Um, and that was sort of the game to sort of just ride it out, obviously not looking for a profit, just trying to keep it in one place. Um, and we've been able to do that. So we're very fortunate. And we're also lucky that, as we talked about before, that having outdoor yeah. seating feels a little bit like New Orleans at times. I have to imagine one of the perks of reaching the level of success you've reached is owning a bar. It's like a bonbon. It's like a feather in your cap, especially sure. as a New Yorker. You kind of want it's nice to, you know, all places in New York at a certain point are the extension of your living room, you know, yeah. whether it's your favorite restaurant or your favorite deli or your favorite grocery store um, or park. Um, but it's nice just to have this. It's like an added room to the house that <laughs> is not in the house kind of thing. For people who hear the footsteps, by the way, this is the famous Kuma. There's Kuma. Girl Come over here. She's just sort of like a, a background extra. Just murmurs, doesn't chew her food too loud. <laughs> She's stealing your scenes That's here. That's right. Speaking of your scenes, the Mosquito Coast. Mosquito Coast. Oh man, it's amazing. I told you, I just got finished watching the first episode. It's intense. 
You've set the stakes very high. Stakes uh, stay high. For people who don't fully know the story, first of all, it's based on a, a novel, 40-year-old novel written by your uncle. Written by my uncle Paul. And it's about a man who's sort of loosely based on several family members, my grandfather being one of them, sort of a thrifty, industrious inventor. Um, and in the book, he basically wants to leave America. He wants to get out because he just thinks it's beyond broken. And he sort of throws a grenade over his shoulder and, and takes his family and sort of um, absconds with them to essentially Honduras, which is the Mosquito Coast in the book. Um, our show is a little different in that we sort of we're thinking of it kind of as a prequel that um, has this motivating factor that pushes them out of the country. But the character is still exactly the same. He's this very sort of hopefully by turns charismatic, charming, infuriating guy, um, very opinionated. He's kind of like an uber American in a sense, you know, in that um, like all Americans, I think, to a man or a woman, um, has enormous problems with the way our country's being handled or run. And he just wants to get out and find his Shangri-La. Um, and he sort of forces his family to do it with him. So he's an amazingly complex character. And as I was watching the episode, I couldn't decide if I was rooting for him at certain times or or what his motives were or what exactly. kind of by design. At the time um, Paul wrote the book, he was um, sort of fascinated by the Jim Jones story, which of course no one really knew about until there was the Jim Jones massacre. Yeah. He started to sort of follow that story and the origins of it and, and um, sort of trying to figure out how this sort of benevolent preacher really could go from nice guy midwestern moves to san francisco gains a bigger flock and following and then eventually heads, heads to uh the jungles and makes them commit mass suicide and if we've done our job you're constantly sort of asking that question of you know is he the most loving wonderful father for giving these children this experience or is he the worst man on the planet right. you know the politics within the family is sort of where the show i think lives you know aside from all the sort of repulsive drama that's that happens behind. what was it like to collaborate with your uncle i mean your the source material is written by a guy you've known for your whole <laughs> life know. is that just it a was, phone call i'm taking the role i know it was it was it, normal channels like he he was a, sort of already off you know working with apple to uh to to make it i heard about it through my normal channels i thought oh my god well i'm now actually kind of age appropriate for that. I'd like to do that. I think most people would assume because of the Thoreau connection, it was like your uncle handpicked you and no, said, he I will would, play the role. <laughs> he should have done that when I when the book came out <laughs> when I was 11. It's amazing, <laughs> just coincidental. You it really it. is. It's, it's one of those, you, I don't know, in a career you get lots of sort of happy accidents and this is definitely one of them. You know? Some people might remember the movie too from mm -hmm. the 80s with Harrison Ford. And yeah. Do you watch that or do you want that out of your head you know, or how do you? You want that? it out of your head. But yeah. at the same time, I had already seen it a thousand times because right. it not only is it a movie that I had seen, but it's also like a movie that a family member had written when I was a kid. Right. Of course, you kind of think, oh, maybe I would I should call Harrison Ford and genuflect a little and ask him for any tip. But, you know, the truth is I had to work with the words that I was given and rediscover the character. And I also reread the book, which gave me ideas for the way that I wanted to do it. And I did a pretty good job of keeping him out of my sort of periphery. I was just thinking, listen, you talk, I interviewed Ed Harris not long ago, and he's playing Atticus Finch on Broadway. And he said, mm -hmm. the first thing I did was not watch Gregory Peck. Yeah. I didn't want that floating around yeah. in my head. because I, I definitely didn't do a rewatch of Mosquito yeah. Coast. Yeah. Be like, let me see if I can steal anything from Harrison Ford. Um, <laughs> Probably wise. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Although I did get, end up meeting him in Mexico City when we were shooting. Oh, really? Another happy accident where he was coming through to do some work and a mutual friend said, oh, Harrison's, I don't know him, but he, there was a, Harrison's going to be, you know, in town, you should, whatever. And we ended up having this long, fantastic dinner. Oh, you know, that's amazing. It was really, we didn't really even talk. We talked a little bit about the making of Mosquito Coat. Like it was, he, he credits as being one of his most joyous work experiences, um, just for the location, the cast that they had, and he lived on a boat and cooked his own food, you know, like, yeah. had, so he, he, he loved that experience. But then we just talked about, you know, carpentry and plane and things like that. <laughs> yeah. Is that a crazy thing for you to have watched a guy your whole life and then all of a sudden you're sitting at dinner? I, I don't, I think I'm old enough to not be sort of starstruck and like, oh my God, your hand's so low. And he is. But I think more and more, uh, at least in my life, when I meet people that I 
uh, that I hold in high regard, I really just kind of want to mine them for their experience and and their wisdom, you know, for the most part. If, um, and because those are people who have clearly done something right. Um, and so it's just, and I find them a joy to talk to if you, you know, I don't want to talk about the business or anything like that. I'm just more curious about what they're like. Yeah, you know? he's a fascinating guy too yeah. on so many other levels. Yeah. Um, the experience of working with Apple TV. I love talking to guys who come up in the business and now there's this new ish world of streaming where people talk about creative freedom and you don't <laughs> yeah, get yeah. notes every minute of every day. <laughs> what yeah, was yeah. it like for you? When I was first starting out, there was really just sort of the four networks. Um, and with that comes an enormous amount of downward pressure creatively. Yeah. And now, as we all know, with the golden age of television, television's really exploding in this creatively for really writers, you know, and showrunners um, and actors are the, you know, are reaping the benefits of that, of getting good, better and better parts, you know. So it's a Apple's been great, you know, like it's the perfect amount of um, hands on, hands off, you know, where they, they come in and they just sort of tap the ship sometimes because it's a pretty big yeah. production and they sometimes just, you know, uh, put it a little bit back on course. But that's only if something's going even slightly wrong. You know, it's it, they're not coming in the way I think the big uh, networks used to come in and say, you can't do this, you can't do that and make sure there's six commercial breaks. Yeah, it seems like the new executive ethos in entertainment is hire good people, yeah. hire talented people and write the and check and walk away. And let them do what away. they do. You know, like let when you have a good group, don't mess with the formula, you know, like let let people be creative, you know, and that's you know, at the end of the day, you know, uh, people get to, you know, headline things and people get to whatever. And obviously showrunners are stars within their own right. Um, but it's a team sport. You know what I mean? You know, and and it doesn't work unless everyone's kind of doing the, you know, firing on all cylinders for exactly what they do, whether that's a grip or whether that's a makeup person or whatever. You, know, you really have to let everyone have their say. And then the director, obviously. Seems focuses. ideal, and maybe we should have been doing this all along. I know. <laughs> you know? I know. Who, who know. Why haven't we been? I know. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. So when you were growing up, was that sort of the path you saw yourself on? I'm going to follow in some ways in the family no. business? No, I knew I was never going to be, um, uh, <laughs> I don't know how to phrase this. I didn't do well in school, <laughs> and that's putting it mildly. Um, the multiple schools that I went to. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I mean, look, I credit a, a very um, good mother uh, who um, who always encouraged me with, through lots of frustration. But no matter what was going on in my life academically, which was not much, she was always encouraging me to do the thing that I liked. And it was painting. It was art. It was drama. Um, I can't imagine if, you know, if she had been adamant that I become a doctor because that would never have happened or, or even an accountant, anything. Um, and I was sort of the kid that, you know, was wearing a pan on his head, you know, um, <laughs> with muddy from the waist down, you know, like 
Was it after college when you started toying around with acting and thinking, oh, maybe I could no. do this for a living? I mean, I studied acting. And then you all have the rude awakening when you get to New York and you go, oh, no one wants me. And then I just worked, you know, and I did every job in New York from bartending to um, construction, you know, all the normal, I did billboards, I painted, I did everything. I also came to New York with a double major, drama, visual art, <laughs> which is a real winning combo. <laughs> I did everything I could not to wait tables because that's a pretty, so for me, a soul crushing experience. Um, and I'm also not good at it. Um, and then bartending I found, and that was kind of the, that was the greatest job ever because you're basically um, kind of your own boss and it gives you the flexibility to audition and do all those things. And then, you know, I didn't really have any kind of like moment where I was sort of anointed and now you're gonna work, you know? I was doing small things, guest stars, you know, New York shows every now and then I'd get something that was kind of a mm, in L.A., you know, um, and um, and it was just, a, I think, a really great, slow kind of road, you know, um, you know, it was nice when I could finally quit the bartending job. You know, if you're young, I mean, and all of a sudden you're just that magic wand hits you, it can be a really jarring experience, or at least from people I know who that's happened to. Um, uh, but yeah, I think it's kind of, you know, all things happen for the way they're supposed to happen. And you were, you were pretty set on being in New York. Yeah, I actually, I went to, uh, I did go, uh, I was saying to uh, be a sort of a third PA for James L. Brooks uh, at his company, Grayson Films. And I got to drive him home one night. He said, go to New York. He said, don't ever go to LA unless someone flies you there. Because then you kind of know you're actually wanted there. <laughs> You know, I think that was great advice because I, A, I love New York and it was kind of the advice that I wanted to hear. Um, but B, you know, he said, you know, the, the competition is hard in New York and, and you'll, you'll know quickly whether you should be doing this, you know. Um, it can take longer, I think, in Los Angeles to figure that out. There are a couple of rites of passage for a New York actor. You can be a corpse on Law and Order. We know that's yep. one. I don't yep. think you did that. I didn't, I, I'm st if Law and Order, if you're listening, I, I'm ready to be a corpse whenever you want. <laughs> Every one Thoreau. of my friends has done like a, a uh, you know, like a, a guest star and, you know, either on the jury or in the witness box. Okay, so um, you're pitching yourself for that. That's I'm good. pitching myself for a Law and Order. Okay. ASAP, please. And then the other one is, of course. I play drug dealer. Be <laughs> Now you're getting a little greedy here. Let's <laughs> yeah, just get exactly. you on the show. And then the other one is, of course, to be on Sex and the City. Yes. Which you were twice. Twice. But as different guys. As different guys. Now, how does that happen? Well, I think, you know, that show was a huge success in New York and went multiple seasons, of course, as everyone knows. Um, and at a certain point, you kind of burn. And when it's about girls who are dating all the time, you burn through every single male actor in New York, you know? And I think basically I hit it in that perfect little g-spot where like i was the last actor in new york at the first time i did it and so then they ran out of them again and then i guess my number came up um no it was actually kind of funny i think i did a sort of a small part on the first one you know sort of a you know enters frame says a few things and then leaves frame um and then but we had such a blast doing it um and loved working with Sarah jessica and also we knew a few people in common um and they were like why don't you come can you come back and, and i was like yeah of course i'd have to you know um, and I remember the big idea, they were like, yeah, well, we don't really use actors twice. It's kind of a thing. And their idea was that we, they would just shave my head. <laughs> so they just gave me this really short haircut and like some glasses or something. They were like, voila, <laughs> total transformation. Just hope they don't notice. <laughs> so like, That's not the guy with the dark hair that was longer <laughs> earlier, was it? Sarah walked into rehearsal and was like, you again. Oh, yeah, okay. exactly. <laughs> I know. It was a more substantial part of the second one. But... Um, but yeah. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Good morning, welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are. <laughs> Exactly. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. 
Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Mohan Drive in 2001, which was can where it debuted, was about 20 that was years ago right now. It was May of 2001, 20 years ago. That was a moment for you, I have to. That absolutely was yeah. a moment whether you're sort of early in your career or even late in your career. To go to the Cannes Film Festival with David Lynch is like showing up with the Pope. To walk out onto the closet with him with a movie that's premiering there, I'd never seen. I mean, it's the widest, thickest, most glamorous red carpet. It's walls of photographers. Um, and to be with David Lynch with that movie and Naomi and Laura was just like, pretty breathtaking, you know, for that week, you know, the, the world was our oyster. Um, it was the first time someone like recognized me, or, you know, that kind of thing. Right. You know, like, oh, that's kind of cool. Um, uh, but it was just, you know, and it was such a good movie too. And what a learning reunion. experience, right? To have reunion. Yeah. What, to work with David. A spinoff. <laughs> Reboot. <laughs> I know, oh God. <laughs> Things David will never do ever. <laughs> Last years. David, we're thinking reboot. David, uh, we got this thing. It's kind of a four camera sitcom situation. <laughs> I think it could be really great. Um, but that, I mean, to learn that early in your career from a master like David Lynch, just how movies are made and what a good performance looks like must have been some. I, I can't describe being on a David Lynch set. I've been on, fortunate enough to be on two. But when you're doing a movie with David, it's almost like doing a comedy or something because mm. he's got this incredibly bright personality um, and he's calm, you know, so when things as things inevitably do on a set go wrong, he his first reaction is always, oh, great. You know, like he just, oh, that's cool. Like, you know, like the DP will come on and he goes, oh, you know, the sunset day, we're not going to get the shot. And he'll be like, oh, it's a night scene. He always leans into what would normally be catastrophic and he gets like kind of incredible results, you know, but it does teach you just as a as an actor or a person that Sometimes you should embrace the, uh, the difficulty and it'll make your life easier. You know, he's an optimist, I guess, yeah. you know, which is interesting Parrot, when you look, you know, there's feels like there's a darkness I there know. in the movie, but it doesn't sound like the that's movie you is. watch after working with him is always you just can't even imagine, you know, you're like, that's the movie that we shot. I remember me and Naomi went and saw the first cut of Mulholland Drive at David's house. He said, I want to show you guys the movie. And so come up to the house. We went up to the house. And we kind of stumbled around, we stumbled out of the house, you know, a couple hours later. And we're just like, that was the most insane. That's so good. We, I mean, we love the movie, um, but so we good. just thought, wow. But he does something when he goes back to the lab. He's and, incredible. That yeah. movie's so good. So yeah. good. Worth going back and watching 20 yeah. years later. Oh my God. I won't go through your IMDb page, I promise. Thank I don't God. want to bore, I don't want to bore Kuma. Uh, <laughs> she goes through it nightly with me. <laughs> I, I make her, I'm like, come on, you know, what was the fifth one? <laughs> Um, one of the most amazing things about you, which I think most people don't know, is that you were one of the writers on Tropic Thunder. Correct. And the writer on Iron Man 2. Correct. Which is unbelievable. Yeah. So, I mean, because people view Talk you as an about actor, happy this accidents. guy. Well, how, so the, what was the happy ap accident of Tropic you know, Thunder? I, I was doing a play on Broadway with uh, Ben Stiller's then girlfriend. Um, I met Ben. I was a big fan of the Ben Stiller show. Um, huge fan, I would say. We ended up becoming friends and he really was one of those people that reached behind and pulled me up because i was writing a little bit at the time 
he would come to town uh, periodically and do like, you know, Letterman or Conan. And he used to do sort of much more elaborate bits. And, um, and so we'd spitball and I'd help him come up with ideas, you know, like, oh, this could be funny. That could be funny. Um, and we would do these like sort of long extended bits. Um, and then he was like, you should really write. So then I ended up just writing some things for him, you know, like when he would do like the MTV awards, he hosted comedy things writing. like that. Comedy writing. But I didn't really know I was comedy writing. Yeah. Um, and then he had an idea which was hilarious. Um, and the germ of the idea was a bunch of actors go to uh, make a Vietnam War movie and come back to L.A. claiming they have PTSD. That was kind of the, the, the kernel. And... We just riffed on that for months and months, just laughing and just thinking all the hilarious, really goofing on actors. Um, and that was the joke. And then eventually it just snowballed and I started writing scenes and we, we'd kind of write disparate scenes here and there, just things that we thought were funny. And then eventually it sort of got cobbled together and we passed stuff back and forth. And then, um, and then eventually it was the movie that we got, you know, like um, it was Chopper Thunder. Had you written before? Kind of rewrites and things like that, or punch-ups or, but nothing like, that was my first screenplay, you yeah. know? Um, and then um, as a result of that, um, got to work with Robert Downey Jr. Right. Uh, who played Lazarus. And, um, and then we hit it off. And then he was like, why don't you come? And he, he had just done, um, Iron Man, he was kind of working concurrently on it. He had finished Iron Man, was working on Tropic Thunder, was worried that Iron Man wasn't going to do well. I remember we were <laughs> sitting in the trailer in the jungle and he was like, I just got the trailer for Iron Man. You want to see it? I went to his trailer and watched it. And Iron Man actually was a comic book figure that I loved as a kid. I even had the doll. And I watched it and I just was blown away. And I was like, dude, buckle up. That is going to be a ride. That's going to do so well. And he's like, no, no, it's not going to do it. You wait, it will. And then, um, we had such a good rapport working on it that he, when obviously we know what happened to Iron Man, it failed miserably. Yeah, um, billion dollars later. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Only one. <laughs> um, and then, uh, and then he just said, "Why don't you come meet with Kevin Feige and Jeremy Latchman and those guys?" And so we went. And we pitched. And so you wrote Iron Man too. Yeah, it's incredible. What raises the question of those two massive successes? What else are you working on? <laughs> What's your next? I've got a couple of things on the shelf that um, there's one in particular that I that's a comedy that I really want to do that I've wanted to do for years. I've already written it. Um, it's just a question of where it lives and how it how it lives, you know. And will you be in it? Is that something you write for yourself? I'm self-conscious about writing for myself. This has happened before where I'll write something and then I'll, I'll be like, oh, that could be a part I could play. And then I'll be like, but you know who would be great? You know, and I'll, I'll think of someone who's actually better for the job, you know, which is weird. So terrible at casting Show some humility. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. It's a big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Right. Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with... Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You were talking about 20 years ago, that experience of being on the red carpet for the first time and people recognizing you and all that. Now, 20 years later, I suspect when we step outside, there might be some company. Well, uh, if, if they got their checks, yeah, there will be. Um, <laughs> what is that like for you to live 
under the microscope and be as well known as you are now? Are you able to keep normalcy in your life? Yeah. I mean, look, I was, you know, the life is any life, anybody's life is really the most important part of it or aspect of it is what is in your four walls of your house um, and your friendships that you maintain. Um, that part is one of those parts where it's just um, I've learned not to complain about it, but it's just it is what it is. you know. I do. Was that a shock to your system, though? Ten years ago, when you started dating Jennifer and got I married, think, all that attention that you got. Yeah, I think a part of me was like, you know, I'm I'm a, essentially sort of a character actor and a writer. There's not much there, there, but um, but yeah, of course, that's a, that's that's one of those things that you think this is that's a strange thing, you know. And at that level, you know, like you know, um, but people are interested, you know, people, for whatever reason, you know. There's you know, there's Jason Bateman actually once gave me one of the most sage pieces of advice ever. Um, when all that was kind of going on and, and he said, um, he said, yeah, man, cause we are already friends at that point. And he, he said, look, um, you know, it's, here's, what's going to happen. It's, and, and it happens to everybody is that in that side of the entertainment industry, a character is about to be born right. and that character is you, but it's not you, you know? So that character is, you know, angry, that character got a problem that character is you know sweet that character you know it's just this little soap opera that gets written in the margins um and he said and so my advice is don't follow that guy's storyline mm. you know um and it was a good piece of advice because i stuck to it and and that's the only way you can sort of keep saying and all that so you were you able to block all that out i mean that's great yeah, advice I mean, it's hard how do you do that you're leaving the house and there's blah blah right. but it's but yeah uh, yeah for the most part you know it's an unsolvable riddle. So you kind of just go, eh, I don't know why, you know, it's that fascinating because right. I don't think one thing helps the other. That's sort of the excuse that it's often used. Like, well, they want it. They like that. And you're like, well, yeah. no, they don't, you know, yeah. speaking of Jen, she's got the show, obviously mm -hmm. on Apple, you're on Apple now. Mm -hmm. Is there any possibility of some kind of collaboration on any level? <laughs> Not that you turn up on her show. Know. Wouldn't it be weird if Ali Fox <laughs> showed up on the morning show? <laughs> It might just confuse the view. I'd love to do it, of course, but I think it would actually be more confusing than anything else. Like, are they trying to marry these two shows? Is it a crossover episode? What's happening? Allie would be a strange morning show guest. <laughs> totally. A little... Or the best morning show right. guest. Well, thanks for hosting us here. Oh, today all day, looking for a hot and delicious date? <laughs> Who is it? Up next on Hashtag Cooking, Sama Dada is taking you on a date with dates. And it'll be hard not to fall in love. First up, she's making the perfect sweet and salty snack, miso almond date bites. Then she's going to whip up a creamy date shake. And then to top it off, a French toast smothered in a gooey date caramel. I do get hangry sometimes, <laughs> shockingly. You would think, because I'm always cooking, I never get hangry, but you know what? It just happens to the best of us. I have been dating for a long time, and no, it's not what you're thinking. I have been eating dates, dates, for a long time. I grew up around them, especially during Ramadan, when we would eat them to break our fast. And since then, I've been absolutely hooked and I hashtag cannot stop dating. I want you to be just as obsessed with dating as I am, so I'm gonna show you three of my favorite recipes. First up, we've got my miso almond date bites, which are salty and sweet. Then I'm gonna show you how to make my super simple vegan date shake. And finally, we're gonna make my favorite French toast with an almond butter date caramel. When you're shopping for dates, let me tell you something important. Make sure you're looking for the medjool variety. These are a lot sweeter and chewier than their other counterparts, which tend to be a bit drier and not as great to bake with, or cook with, or eat as a snack. I like to eat these plain as well, which is why I look for a nice, delicious, chewy, sweet medjool date, because you want something that's a nice, sweet snack, but you don't want anything that's dry. These miso almond crunch bites have everything going for them. They've got some umami from the miso, some crunch from the almonds. They're the perfect snack to keep in the fridge for when you want something a little sweet, but you still wanna eat something wholesome. I'm putting in a solid amount because I love a date. These are gonna act as a really nice base, a really sweet and chewy base. It's gonna allow these bites to stick together and we're not gonna add any other sugar. I think that's 
way too many, but I don't care. So I got my dates in my blender and now I'm gonna add my almonds. I'm using just raw almonds here. These are gonna add the nice crunch to these bites. We love a lot of texture here. Now, to seal the deal, to seal those almonds in, I'm gonna add a little bit of almond butter. You can feel free to use the peanut butter or cashew butter. If you have any other butter in your pantry, feel free to use it. The almonds and the almond butter make this snack super wholesome and delicious. Now, we're gonna add some shredded coconut. Make sure you use the unsweetened variety here because the dates are already gonna add a lot of sweetness to the snack. So pretty. We're gonna add a little vanilla extract, just for a little vanilla. And finally, I'm gonna add some white miso paste. This is made from fermented soybeans, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking about miso soup. Stop that train of thought, halt it right there. This is just gonna add some nice umami flavor and balance out that really nice sweet date and almond combination. Gonna finish this off with a little pinch of salt just to bring everything together. Pull out that sweetness. Little pinch, not too much. And then we're ready to blend. Are you ready? I'm ready. Feel free to scrape down the sides if you need to. I need to. Just to get everything nicely incorporated. What you're looking for with this dough is to have some nice texture. So we don't need everything to be completely pulverized. Totally fine if we have some little bigger or smaller pieces of almonds. That's just gonna really contribute to the crunch. This is what we're looking for. As you can see, it's a bit thick, it's a bit sticky. This is gonna be great because it's gonna help us form it into our little bites. I wish you could smell this. It's like warm and salty and sweet, and I haven't even tasted it yet. Mm, okay. I'm using a really cute cookie scoop here. We want it to be just shy of about a size of a golf ball, but you can make them bigger or smaller if you'd like. I like a little bite-sized bite I can just grab from the fridge when I want something a little sweet and salty. As you can see, this is what we're looking for. You can see a little piece of date here. You've got some different sizes of almond pieces. This is good. We like this. We like texture. It's a work of art. We love this bite. Look at how cute. First one done. My biggest struggle with no-bake recipes like this one is that it really is a challenge <laughs> to get everything to the parchment paper uh, before I eat it all. But I'm doing okay so far. I did sneak a little bite though, don't tell anyone. The dates make it really nice and sticky to form into a little ball as well, which is really great. They add a little sweetness, they allow it to adhere together. See, this is why I love dating. Look at that, super cute. I always have this in my fridge or freezer because I'm always a little hungry. <laughs> I always like to snack, so this is really nice to know. I feel secure when I have this in my freezer or fridge. We're almost at the end. There's a light at the end of this blender tunnel. Pretty good. Just rolled out all of my dough into these cute little bites. And now I'm just gonna let them nap in the fridge for a little bit just to firm up while I melt my chocolate. Look at that. My little date bites have woken up from their nap in the fridge, and I think it's time to add some chocolate. I've melted my chocolate already, as you know. And now I'm just gonna do a really nice, cute drizzle. If you want a little more chocolate, if you want a little desserty vibe, feel free to completely submerge them. I'm just gonna do a nice little drizzle here. Look how smooth and melty that chocolate is. Look at that. All right, we're gonna start drizzling. You don't need too much on your spoon. Go a little light-handed so you can get a nice, cute, delicate drizzle. Or you can go full force, do a really heavy drizzle. Whatever is up to you. The reason I like melting chocolate with coconut oil is that it makes the chocolate really smooth and nice, really drizzleable. Drizzleable. I just make up words, honestly, at this point. Got my own dictionary, drizzleable. Makes it easier to drizzle. Feeling like you want more of a chocolate moment, feel free to completely submerge. Take them for a swim. I 
and will not judge you. In fact, I'll support you all the way. If you're getting fancy, you can even do a little crisscross action like this. I mean, come on. Picasso calls. He wants his date balls back. All right, last one. They look so cute. And now I have one final little step. Just gonna add a little flaky sea salt on top. It's gonna bring out that chocolate. It's gonna balance out the sweetness. I love using flaky sea salt over my entire life. You ready? It's a little. It also looks really pretty too. Those big chunks of flaky salt. It's so pretty, it's so fancy. These bites are gonna take another little nap in the fridge for about 30 minutes. I want this chocolate to firm up and then they'll be ready to eat. What a successful nap. I mean, look at this. So pretty. You've got that nice chocolate drizzle, a little salty contrast. You know what? I should probably take a picture of them before I dig in, so I'm gonna do that. They look too cute not to. Just straight on the tray. Real life action, you know? I've gotta commend my own drizzling skills. I, I just have to have a moment for myself. Okay. I think I'm ready to taste. You know, I thought I was gonna plate them. I had this already, but I'm just gonna eat them straight from the tray because I can't wait. I just can't wait. Okay, here I go. Mmm. <laughs> what was that little almond piece in there? So sweet. The dates, <laughs> simply in my teeth. The dates are so nicely sweet. The almonds add substance, a little crunch. That chocolate on top just seals everything together. And the salt brings all of the flavors out. And that miso, and gives this sort of savory undertone. There's a little salt, just trying to pick up the salt. No salt left behind, you know what I'm saying? Mm. These are so good. You guys have to try these. You guys have to try these. <laughs> Little crunch. It's the best tasting protein. Yeah? Yeah, it is. So, have I convinced you to eat more dates yet? No? Okay, that's kind of crazy. Well, Challenge accepted. I'm gonna go grab the ingredients for my irresistible date shake and show you how it's done. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Stay connected and stream the news you need with Xfinity X5. Our top story is unfolding right now. The fast speed you depend on. We begin with breaking news right now in Florida. And a reliable connection for all your devices. This story matters to all of us. Whenever and however you watch. Our bite-sized mix of everything you love about all four hours of our show, but half the calories. Oh, oh wow. yes. With Xfinity X5. Not to brag or anything, but there are a lot of date farms in my home of Southern California. And with the date farms comes date shakes. 
I wanted to make a super creamy and delicious date shake, but without any of the dairy. But shh, don't tell anyone. They'll never know. Okay, I've gotta preface this recipe by telling you something. It is so easy to make, you'll never believe it. I'm just gonna add all of my ingredients into my blender and it does all the work for me. I've got my dates here. They're pitted, don't leave any pits in there. That may not end well for you. Adding them straight into my blender. To make that super creamy milkshake vibe, I am using frozen bananas. This is a great way to rescue any of your ripe or nearly perished bananas that have just kind of been sitting on your counter for a while. Freeze them, make banana bread with them, make the date shake, super versatile. Also, when you're freezing your bananas, make sure to just cut them up into cute little slices like this. It'll make it a lot easier to blend. I like the nice little ice cream vibe that these bananas will give the date shake. Super good and flavorful. And the bananas add even more natural sweetness. In we go. A couple more things I'm adding. Some vanilla extract. And because I really want to feel hugged by the date shake, I'm going to add cinnamon because we all know cinnamon is like a hug in spice form. You know? Do you agree with me? I agree with me. Adding my cinnamon. Perfect. Now to blend everything together, I'm gonna use some unsweetened almond milk. You can totally use another non-dairy milk option. An oat milk or a coconut would be really nice here as well. Adding my almond milk into my blender. Beautiful. Now all we do is blend. Wasn't that so easy? It's kinda crazy. I shouldn't have, but I did. Here we go. Prepare yourselves. I'm really excited. So I think we're done. Now all I'm gonna do, pour it into my glass and enjoy. Hmm, okay. I mean, look how creamy that is. <gasps> that was it. That was our recipe. I need to send a picture to my parents. They're still in Southern California. They'll be really jealous. Okay. Okay, perfect. Now I get to drink it. So thick. It's too good. It's crazy that this is a plant-based milkshake. It's so creamy. It's so velvety, but there's no milk in it. We love a vegan date shake vibe. So good. Mmm. So cute. So good. I could eat this forever. Eat it, drink it. I could drink it forever. My final recipe that really celebrates the magic of dates is an almond butter date caramel that you will want to put over your entire life, but we're just gonna put it on some French toast. I'm gonna go clean my blender and get the ingredients. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. What Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Stay connected and stream the news you need with Xfinity X5. Our top story is unfolding right now. The fast speed you depend on and a reliable connection for all your devices, whenever and however you watch with Xfinity X5. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? 
We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Oh, we're celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. What Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. In college at Berkeley, whenever I went to breakfast with my friends, they would always go for the eggs benedict, the veggie omelets, but for me, I only had eyes for the French toast. There was a restaurant pretty close to campus called La Note that had one of the best French toasts I've ever had. It had a really nice and sweet, crisp exterior, and I knew I wanted to replicate something just like that in my own kitchen, but with a twist. So, inspired by the French toast of my dreams, we are gonna be making a French toast with an almond butter date caramel. We're gonna start by making an almond butter date caramel that is so luscious you will wanna drown your entire life in it. But today we're just gonna put it on some French toast. Let's start. Add some dates in my blender. We're gonna add a little bit of almond butter. The almond butter is gonna balance out the sweetness of the dates really nicely. To sweeten this up a little further and to add a little bit more of that caramel undertone, we're gonna add some coconut sugar. To make a super luscious and velvety caramel, we're gonna add some vanilla almond milk. I'm using vanilla here, but if you don't have a vanilla, if you just have an unsweetened, you can add a little touch of vanilla extract. My blender is truly my kitchen BFF, so now all we're gonna do is blend it right up. And caramel will await us on the other end of this. Okay, I think we're looking good. Look at how luscious that is. And of course, a traditional caramel is made by heating sugar up on a stove, but this is my version of a caramel that uses dates. Now you can see why I want to put this over my entire life. Our almond butter date caramel is ready. All it needs now is some French toast, so I'm gonna go grab the ingredients to make it. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Good morning, welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> <bad. laughs> Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. What Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, oh, oh. That's just shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day.
time to make our French toast. I've got all of the usual suspects here. My eggs, my cinnamon, my vanilla extract, and I also have some milk. I'm using almond milk here, but you can use your favorite. I'm gonna crack two of my eggs into my beautiful little pie dish here. Cute. Perfect. I'm gonna whisk my eggs together until you don't see any separation between the yolks and the white. I'm really putting my entire body into this. <laughs> Whisking eggs, morning workout, perfect. French toast, workout of your day, okay. I'm on board. Okay. This looks nice and smooth. Now I'm gonna add some of my almond milk. Vanilla extract. Vanilla extract for me is a must when I'm making French toast. I just love that little extra sweetness, that little essence really brings it to life. Little pinch of cinnamon now. We want this to be super smooth, super uniform. It's gonna be a nice little bath for our slices of bread. Okay. I'm gonna add a little coconut oil to my pan, let it melt, and then that's gonna be perfect for me to fry the bread in. Time to dredge our slices of bread in my little mixture here. I'm using sourdough bread here because I love that tangy taste. It's my favorite kind of bread. We're gonna let the bread really soak up that egg mixture. And by the way, French toast is a great use for your stale bread. So if you got any stale bread in your pantry, it's time to make some French toast. I'm gonna flip this over. Make sure it really soaks up all of that goodness. It smells really good already. I know it's crazy because we haven't even cooked it. One last step before I cook my French toast. I'm gonna add a little sprinkle of coconut sugar on both sides because I want that really sweet crispness on the exterior. Look at that. It's gonna get some nice color as well. Now we're going straight to my pan. Hmm, you know what, no harm in adding a little extra sugar on top. So we wanna cook these until they're nice and cooked through, golden brown on both sides, about three to five minutes per side. A great brunch recipe, a great breakfast recipe, and honestly, a great dinner recipe too. Like, who are we kidding? We can have French toast for dinner. There are no rules. I like pan frying these in coconut oil as well because I think it plays really nicely with that coconut sugar. All right, we are going to flip. You know, I consider myself a patient person. But then when I'm cooking French toast, I'm like, hurry up. Can't wait all day. It's not even that long. I don't know why I'm being so dramatic. Just gonna flip my second piece. Look at that color. Looking so golden. Ready for a photo, ready for some caramel, some date caramel. All right, these are looking beautiful. I'm gonna transfer them to my plate. So I'm hungry. Do we think they're ready for their caramel? I think they're ready. It's thick, it's luscious. I'm gonna be generous here. Nothing wrong with a little thick drizzle. Gonna dip in for some more. I really just went for it. I was trying to be delicate before and now I'm just straight up going for it. 
I like having a little pool of caramel on the side. It looks really delicious. I'm gonna add some berries just to sidle up next to that date caramel, sit on top of it. They kind of stick nicely onto that caramel too. A little powdered sugar. You can't tell me you don't want this. You just can't tell me you don't want it. It looks so pretty. I think my note would be proud. I should probably send them a picture. Maybe I'll slide into their DMs. <laughs> oh, it looks so pretty. The almond butter caramel, while delicious, it is a brown color and so is bread. So by adding pops of color like these berries, that powdered sugar, just really brings all of those colors and flavors to life. I'm going in. I'm immediately overwhelmed, so I don't know where to go. <laughs> okay, okay, here we go. We're going for it. Gonna get a nice little crust. Add a berry. Okay, bon appetit. It's, I need a minute. That date caramel is like the best sub for a maple syrup. It's so much more flavorful, more complex. Those dates and the coconut sugar create this really nice marriage of sweetness. I love using sourdough here too because it's sour, it's kind of tart. Because it's so fermented, it goes so well with the sweetness of the caramel. The berries really make everything pop. I mean, I'm not trying to have like a French toast off with La Note, but I don't know. I think I might. I think I might. And don't get me wrong, I love maple syrup. Sometimes we like switching it up. Mm. I love snacking on dates. They're my favorite thing ever. But this almond butter date caramel really shows how many things dates can do. We just love to date dates. They can do it all. We are back. I'm Anthony Contrino, and it is time to get saucy. We've got a brand new kitchen and new episodes coming your way this summer. Tune in to Today All Day, Mondays at 11 a.m. We are excited for our next guest because he is an eight-time Grammy award-winning artist who also won an Emmy in 2013 for Outstanding Original Song in a Children's Program. Ziggy Marley is part of the music dynasty started by his father, Bob Marley, one of the pioneers of reggae music. And if that's not enough, Ziggy, also an accomplished children's author, and he's here today to tell us about his latest book, Ziggy Marley. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Here's the thing. I mean, people know you as a very successful musician, part of reggae royalty. How did Ziggy get into writing children's books? Oh, I have, I have um, seven kids. I have four <laughs> young ones. <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> yeah, that would do it. And um, I mean, it's an extension of songwriting. I, I always love writing. And so, you know, it's just an extension of, of, of writing songs. I love it. I love it. And your, your new book is called My Dog Romeo. It started, uh, it's a story based off of a dog that you actually got during the pandemic. So first, tell us more about your dog and why you wanted to turn this into a book. All right. So my kids, they always wanted a dog, you know, for years now. And my wife was very, very reluctant about it. Um, she was like, oh, the, the dog is going to be like another baby and, <laughs> you know, and so forth. So right before the pandemic hit, we got a dog, a puppy. Um, he's a legato, he's an Italian water dog. And the pandemic hit and we were home together with the dog for the whole year. And, you know, things like that, in, like animals inspire me, dogs inspire me, you know, birds, nature inspire me. So I wrote a song um, about the dog and it's on my latest album, which is a kid's album called More Family Time. And we kind of took, took the song and turned it into a, a, a kid's book. And then you've got another kid's book coming out. This one's called Little John Crow. And you say this is yeah. a book that's really an extension of your own childhood. How so? So when I was growing up in Jamaica, we grew up around, we call him John Crow. 
um, their turkey vultures. And um, we always, as a kid, I used to look on them as very, like, scary, scary creatures. Mm -hmm. And we wouldn't like them, you know. It would be, like, junk, vultures, junkers. Are, the stories we would hear as children were really scary. But as I grew up, I realized that these animals are, are very um, important to our ecosystem. Uh -huh. And so this book kind of goes through that kind of, uh, of um, storyline where this vulture really doesn't want to be a vulture because vultures are seen as dirty and nasty and evil. But, and, but then he accepts himself as a vulture. And just like I accepted um, the importance of the vulture, so in the book, this character accepts himself as a vulture and finally fulfills his destiny. Wow. <laughs> I love that. That's, that's a just, deep children's That book is too. deep and brought to you by nature. I, I think that's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I want to I talk about your dad and music. You know, your father uh, was a mu music legend in the industry, and very instrumental in your career. So what would you say was the best and, and most impactful advice that, that he's given you that you've carried with you throughout the years? I think um, both my parents, really, um, my mother and my father, um, led a life that is not, for me, I didn't learn about things by words or by them telling me things, but by watching them and, be, and them being an example. So mm -hmm. we learned that um, we have to help each other. Um, we learn about the ideas of unity and love and spirituality. And that really has had an impact on me in all my life and my songs and everything, it's coming from that kind of foundation. Mm -hmm. Ziggy, I mean, you've got these, these two children's books coming out. Does that mean we can expect a new album to drop soon? Yeah, music always coming out. Um, you know, <laughs> we're doing a lot of singles, singles nowadays, but yeah, music is always, creativity is just, it's always there. So you can expect something, you know, every now and again, we drop a single and maybe an album um, later this year. Yeah, tis the new model. Singles, yeah, not singles. albums. Uh, Ziggy Morley, <laughs> yeah. thanks for waking up so early, Ziggy. Thank you, thank you. Always a treat. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcast. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Stay connected and stream the news you need with Xfinity X5. Our top story is unfolding right now. The fast speed you depend on. We begin with breaking news right now in Florida. And a reliable connection for all your devices. This story matters to all of us. Whenever and however you watch. A bite-sized mix of everything you love about all four hours of our show, but half the calories. Oh, oh yes. With Xfinity X5. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. There's a brand new children's book on the shelf, and it happens to be written by one of our friends, Mark Shriver. It is called 10 Hidden Heroes, and it teaches kids to count while it also teaches them about everyday heroes that are hidden on each page. And it was inspired by Mark's career as president of the Save the Children Network. Hi, Mark, Mark, we love you already. <laughs> and we love you, well, partly because we love your, your sister, Maria, but but we love how your whole family has always been of service, Mark. Maria once told me, she said, we never took vacations as kids. Every trip we took was one of service. Is that how you remember it? I think we had a little bit of fun along the way, but it was definitely, service was definitely interspersed in all of those activities. So yes, we definitely were exposed and to all the different activities in a, in a country. And we did service when we visited a foreign country, but we also had some fun. 
You know, Mark, this book is so cool, mm -hmm. and I feel like it's coming at the perfect yes. time. You know, finally, I think we're paying attention to those that lift up our country. Uh, this last year has taught us that. And I got to count with my kids yeah. and find, you know, in a world where's Waldo type way, some yeah. of these awesome people. And it really starts conversations. That's so great to hear, Jenna. Thank you. Uh, that was exactly what the book was designed to do. It's to see the hidden heroes, what Pope Francis calls uh, the hidden saints next door, mm -hmm. who are doing these wonderful things in our community and don't get lifted up uh, very often. Uh, so much in American culture, we focus on, you know, the Super Bowl winning quarterback, the CEO has a lot of money, uh, the movie star. But I think what we really should focus on are the people who are doing great things uh, good things every day. Um, and that's what the book is supposed to do. It's supposed to spur conversations between adults and little children and hopefully be a learning experience and a fun experience for both um, readers and little kids. Well, it's such a cool concept. And by the way, the illustrations what that we're looking at right now are amazing. Who is the illustrator on this one? Uh, Laura Watson. She is uh, from Canada. Um, it's, we made the decision, you know, in May, June of last year, right in the height of COVID, uh, and our children were home, two of them were home from college, our third child is in high school, and Jeannie and our, all five of us took a secret ballot on our favorite uh, illustrator. We had a couple to choose from, and Laura was number one in all of our secret ballots. So it was a, it was a family process, and the kids helped uh, identify some of the heroes in the pages. And Jeannie wrote some of the uh, refrains. So it was a really uh, family-oriented project, a yeah. lot of fun. We're hoping that it spurs lots of great conversations and lots of fun journeys. You know what's funny? Jen and I have this conversation a lot. We talk about wanting our children to be of service. And this is a good starting point. Obviously, this book, you're watching people just serve their neighbors. But how did you teach your kids about the importance of service? Like, what did you do on a daily basis so that became part of their life? I think little kids, uh, you know, soak up what their parents uh, do, and they soak it up when your par the parents are happy and joyful. And I think if they see you doing things of service to others, whether it's cleaning up the dishes after dinner, whether it's doing something on the weekend for the homeless, for those that are hungry, I, I think these gestures add up, and kids see that, and they see that you're happy doing it, and you're joyful doing it, and they're gonna start following you. I mean, my mother and father, um, I don't think ever lectured us on service, but I knew that they went to work every day. I knew my father had great admiration for Peace Corps volunteers. He started that program. My mother was Special Olympics athletes. Uh, she started that program and great admiration for Special Olympic parents. Those were the heroes that were discussed in our household. And I know that when I saw them get up and want to go to work every day and be happy and excited about that, uh, just kind of fell in line for us. And I hope my wife, Jeannie, and I are doing the same thing well, for our kids. You are. Just exposing them. <laughs> yeah. You're definitely doing it by this book, but also with your work with Save the Children. I've gotten to meet you through that awesome organization. How does this book yes. tie into that work? Save the Children, uh, Jenna, as you know, spends a lot of time focused uh, in rural America, rural poverty, kids that are struggling uh, academically, and little children, zero to six years of age. If kids enter kindergarten ready to learn, uh, they're going to grow. Uh, and they're gonna succeed in school and beyond. Uh, so we focus on those first six years of life, making sure that there are books in the home, that parents know how important it is to read to their children, um, expose them to uh, literacy. And over uh, the last 12 months, really focused on feeding children as well, because we wanna fill their bellies and fill their minds. And COVID has had a dramatic impact on the distribution of food through the school lunch program. So Save the Children has stepped into that hole. Uh, we're feeding kids, giving them academic resources, and hopefully filling their minds as well. Mark, we appreciate you. Everything, you're, all the work you're doing. We hope people Thank check you. out this book. It's called 10 Hidden Heroes. You can get it at today.com or anywhere, yes. really. Get yeah. it wherever you want, wherever Thanks. books are sold. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. <laughs>Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? 
Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Stay connected and stream the news you need with Xfinity X5. Our top story is unfolding right now. The fast speed you depend on. We begin with breaking news right now in Florida. And a reliable connection for all your devices. This story matters to all of us. Whenever and however you watch. A bite-sized mix of everything you love, about all four hours of our show, but half the calories. Oh, yeah. oh yes. With Xfinity X5. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. What you may not know about Jimmy is he started singing as a young age, as a child. He stuttered, so a therapist had him write down his feelings on a piece of paper and sing what he wanted to say and a songwriter was born. Well, now this brilliant individual is written a beautiful children's book to help kids use their voices to stand up for what they believe in. And this book is called My Voice is a Trumpet. Jimmy! Jimmy! <laughs> hello, hello. Uh, okay, first of all, there's too many new things happening in your life where, you know, we, we need to slow down, okay? <laughs> You're newly married. You've got a new children's book. What was the third thing? I don't know. There's you had a baby. A baby, another. You know, you, you've got a, a bunch of new things happening in your life. Just how does it feel to be a newlywed? I know you've been in a relationship for a long time, though. Uh, it feels great. Um, you know, uh, I, uh, things, I don't know. It's different. It's not different, but it's different. If that <laughs> makes sense. I feel like now I kind of really like have to listen to her more, <laughs> <laughs> you know, cause before I could be like, well, this is mine. It says Alan on it. <laughs> She's like, well, it's my last name now. <laughs> oh, <wait. laughs> and you have a new little one Aww. on the way. You have two, you already have yeah. two beautiful kids. Beautiful. I'm, I'm sure you're looking so forward to that. I am. You know, it's another it's another girl. Mm. Uh, so uh, you already know that we will be spending even more time uh, at Disney World. Uh, <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, it's. Uh, it's great. You know, I, I thought it was going to be a boy. We both did, hence why we don't have a name yet. And we found out it was going to be a girl. We were like, E, what do we call her? <laughs> what do we call so her? I might just name her, hey, you. <laughs> hey, you, come here. Come You're here. not. Come here. Hey, uh, Jimmy, first of all, I didn't know the, the, this yes. part of your story that you, when you were a little boy, that you were, you stuttered and yeah. it was something that you had to overcome. Tell us what that was like as a little boy dealing with that. Uh, man, it was it was rough for us because I hated like talking in person. Yeah. Uh, public speaking, forget about it. Reading in public, forget about it. And it was one of them things where I started so bad to where <laughs> it's not funny, but <laughs> oh yeah, it's funny. I used to like slap my leg to get the word out, mm. like, uh, 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 or I would at <laughs> one time ask my friends a question like. Uh, Hey, uh, how many, how many, like, man, how many times you gonna ask that question? I'll be like, ah, my bad. Oh my uh, but no, I, I kind of got to the point where, you know, I, I want to do something about it. Um, so I got a speech therapist. Uh, how do you say it? Speech pathologist. Yeah. That is just, mm -hmm. Pathologist. Yeah, it yeah. sounds expensive. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, uh, so she started having me write down what I wanted to say, right? And then she had me sing the first two words of the sentence because you notice when people sing, they don't stutter. Mm -hmm. So if I wanted to say, hey, how y'all doing today? I'd be like, hey, how y'all doing today? I was like, then once mm -hmm. I get going, 
I'm I'm good to go. But ever since I learned how to stop stuttering, well, I can't shut up. <laughs> you know what, too? <laughs> this book is beautiful. It beautiful. compares kids' voices to trumpets, to rainbows, to honey, yeah. some some that are silent. And and I feel like it's a bigger metaphor of teaching kids that they should use their voice for good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. You know, it um it's super important to me because I feel like that age, you know from birth to four or K through fourth grade, you know, kids are still at the sponge age. And it's like everything that they're going to have in their tool belt as an adult and as a teenager is what's placed into their life at that age. Yeah. So it's important to kind of get in early and let them know that, Hey, you're important. It's okay to encourage yourself. It's also encourage okay to encourage other people, you know, and when you see something happening that you don't agree with, you know, you can say something about it because if we don't, they turn into adults who don't encourage other people, don't encourage mm -hmm. themselves. You know, when they see things happen, they're afraid to speak up, you know? So I, I kind of wanted to just get in at a young age and do that. And shout out to my teachers who I am super close with yeah. still my kindergarten teacher, my first grade teacher that were really important to me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my life through books, through music, that was uh, Miss Adair. Back then she was Miss Alexander mm -hmm. and Miss Sharp. Um, my kindergarten teacher and my first grade teacher, um, mm, uh, well. Ms. Alexander is actually going to be reading my audio book. Oh, uh, awesome. Well, Jimmy, yeah. we, we adore you. I love that you shouted out all your teachers. Yes. That's so you, uh, we want people to check out your book. It's called my voice is a trumpet. You can get it at today.com. It is just beautiful. Love you, Jimmy. Love you, Jimmy. He is an Egyptian heart surgeon turned comedian and TV host who's being called the John Stewart of the Middle East. He's got more than 40 million viewers of his political satire show. Now, Bassem Youssef and his family call L.A. home, which led him to write a book for young readers called The Magical Reality of Nadia, a way to help his daughter Nadia t adapt to living in America while embracing her culture. Look at famous Bassem is here. <laughs> Hi, Bassem. How are you? Hi, Hoda. How are you? Hi, Jenna. Hi. It's so great to see you. Now, we should tell people a little bit of the backstory. You fled Egypt because as a political satirist, that was a no-no. Um, describe your journey here to the U.S. Well, uh, as you said, I ran into some troubles because of comedy, out of all things. And I came here to America in the most interesting political times when, you know, Donald Trump was rising to power. So uh, that kind of inspired me to write something for my daughter, because I think I believe that whatever problems we have to go through as adults, they weren't addressed as young kids. So mm -hmm. I thought like maybe I would like use my experience and kind of channel it into a, a younger readers. But uh, I didn't want it to be on the nose, so I used magic, I used history, <laughs> I used fantasy, and uh, I, I I think it's um, it's a cute book because uh, first of all I get to write a book for my daughter, and. Uh, um, and, and I think she enjoyed it. I, at least she tells me that. Oh, is she right there, by the way? Yeah, where is she? Is she nearby? Okay. We can't, we can't go on without oh, there her. She there is. she is. Hi, Nadia. How oh. are you? Good. Good. Well, when you found out that your dad was going to write a book with you as the main <laughs> character, as the star, what did you tell him? I, wa I, I was just like, oh. <laughs> Well, you know, well, she's, she's very critical, by the way. Uh, she told me, by the way, I get in the book is not uh, at all like me because I do not collect bobbleheads. And I said, and I said, Nadia, this is not an autobiography. It's, an, uh, it's a fiction. So when I told her it's fiction, what did you tell me? Nadia? It's fantasy. It's fantasy because it has magic. Oh. Fantasy. Got, boy, she's smart. I know. I Nadia, love it. You are super smart. You're you're obviously you're the book is written with your daughter as the central character. But this is something that all kids can take a page from. So what do you hope it how, how other kids take from it? Well, oh, no, that, that was a question for me. Maybe. Oh. Sorry. So <laughs> so uh, basically, uh, this is a question that promotes the idea that being different is cool. I yeah. think the the. In, um, the, 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 one of the reasons why America is an, a unique place is it allows people with their own differences to come in and to live together. And I, I think there is a message here to tell people that being different is cool. It's not a source of suspicion. It's not a source of uh, weakness. Uh, this country is good, is great because of all of the different people and the different culture here. I think we should embrace our differences while in the same time call ourselves Egyptian-American, Chinese-American, 
um, the Korean American, it doesn't matter. We could all come from somewhere. Even if you think that you own this country and you've been here forever, your parents, your grandparents at a certain point came from somewhere, which makes us all basically uh, in the same boat. Well, it's a beautiful book awesome. about acceptance. Yes. I read a little bit to my little girls last night, and Nadia, they love you. <laughs> <laughs> Nadia's a star. Bossom, thank you. Yeah, of course she, she is. is. It was, it's a Bossom, really beautiful book. Thank, thank you, you so much. Bye, Nadia. And you can find Bye, the magical Bye. reality of Nadia. Oh, thank you. Thank um, you. On today.com slash shop. Stay connected and stream the news you need with Xfinity X5. Our top story is unfolding right now. The fast speed you depend on and a reliable connection for all your devices, whenever and however you watch with Xfinity X5. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. <laughs> Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Stay connected and stream the news you need with Xfinity X5. Our top story is unfolding right now. The fast speed you depend on and a reliable connection for all your devices, whenever and however you watch with Xfinity X5. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. For those of you who don't know Rocky Merchandani, she is a mom, she's an award-winning author, and more than that, she is a longtime friend of our show. And girl, she's a force she of nature. She sure is, and now she's written a new book called Hair Twins that centers around a little girl, her dad, and the special bond they share. And it happens to be based on Rocky's daughter and husband. Rocky's with us. Hey, girl. Oh, hey, friend. It's, How are you? Okay, seeing Rocky just warms my heart. Rocky's <laughs> been a part of this program for almost as long as this program has been in existence. So first of all, we love you. How soft? Did, how's she doing? She's great. She's really salty that I sent her to school today. But I was like, this is, I put on spanks and heels for Hoda and Jenna today. Go to school. <laughs> Rocky, I read this beautiful article that you wrote for mm. today.com. Mm. Really, that was the genesis of this book. And you call yeah. it a heart song, which mm. I, like kind of I know. warmed my heart. So will you just, first of all, I've read this book to both of my girls. Yes. They loved it. So will you just tell us a bit about the genesis of this awesome book? Yeah, thanks. I'm so glad the girls loved it. I was so keen for them to, for you all to share it over a bedtime story. Hair Twins is the story of my family. It is the story of my husband, Agen. It is the story of my daughter, Satya, and it's a story of their bond. Agen and Satya, as part of their faith, uh, they don't cut their hair, as many six don't. And when Satya was little and Agen would tie his turban, Satya would pull up this little stool and stand next to him in the bathroom oh. and watch him tie his <laughs> turban. And it was that moment that took my breath away, an everyday moment, because it's a connection that they shared, this deep bond about mm -hmm. who they are, their faith, the community they come from. It ties them to each other, right? But it also ties them to Agan's parents and our grandparents, mm -hmm. to the global community we're a part of. And for me, that bond was so special and so beautiful. I wanted to share it with everybody. So this book is a window into our apartment, into mm -hmm. our lives, mm -hmm. into who we are, into the pride we feel to be all the things we are, Indian and American, sick, from New Jersey. <laughs> and I hope that it's also an invitation. I hope that every single person who reads it, adult or kid, they feel, call, they feel called and compelled to share who they are, mm. all the parts of themselves with others. That is so beautiful. That is so beautiful. And I think you did so many things great with Satya. For people who don't remember, she was a little girl who was battling cancer many years ago. And we all held hands and prayed a lot around this studio for that little girl. And she is now <laughs> the subject of a couple of books. But I was just thinking, knowing who you are as a kid is can sometimes be a struggle. Yeah. Because, you know, 
kids are kids are different. All kids are different. And how did you help Satya like feel good in her own skin? I think in some ways she's felt me. She's made me feel good in my own yes. skin, Hoda. I struggled as a little brown girl in mm -hmm. New Jersey in the 80s and 90s. I had a foot in both worlds. I had a foot in India. I had a foot in America. And I felt like my entire existence hinged on keeping those things separate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For Seth, that was really important to us to bring all of who we are and all of, she, of who she is. Oh my God, I love that picture. To everything. <laughs> so, <laughs> like she's a riot. And so we go to her class, right? And now it's over Zoom. And we talk about our holidays. We talk about our food. This weekend or this Thursday, we're going to celebrate Holy with her class. And I think just not compartmentalizing the parts of ourselves, but fully living into all mm -hmm. of who we are all the time has made her own every mm. part of herself and i think she takes up a lot of space in this world <laughs> because she's able to do that and i also hope uh, that she's making space for others right to do the same to yeah. share who they are rocky that's that it's is sort beautiful. of the the part of the mm -hmm. this article about how you, she's different than you are when you were little and there's this moment where a mom in her class sits next to you on a bench in the park and says my daughter wants to be like her my yeah. daughter yeah. asked if, if i could braid her hair like <laughs> hers and that must have been like this yeah. profound mom moment for you it actually makes me cry to think about it because i if i could have washed the brown off my skin as a, as, as a little girl i would have done it mm. and to hear a mother mm. it was so generous of her to say this to me and she said you know my daughter she wants to have beautiful long beautiful braids like Satya. <laughs> and i know why Satya's braids are so long they're long and they're beautiful because they're reflective of her faith because she's a little sick girl, right? And, these, and her hair is a commitment to love and to mm -hmm. equality and to service and to social justice. And to know that when she walks through the world, mm -hmm. folks see it for what it is, confidence, beauty, connection. <sighs> I mean, Rocky, was, we can't. Okay, Rocky, is, please stop doing this to us. We love you. Please get here, twins. This is so good. And we love you. you. Uh, go uh, to I love to, you both so thank much. Thank you, Rocky, for being here. And Today.com yes. slash shop. Twins. Pick it up. Buy it wherever you can. All right. And we'll be back right after this. Mm. Welcome to Today All Day. All Day? Today All Day. All Day. This is a long oh, way of man. asking, yeah. who's your favorite okay. character you've ever oh, played? The right. unicorn. The unicorn. You gotta have the unicorn. <laughs> what is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice yeah. things? Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. Yeah. I don't want the wrath of Luna. When I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. My buddy Cal cooking with me. That's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today. With simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit oh, now. How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping. There's this new study. It was published in the journal Science, and it really takes everything that we thought we knew about metabolism and aging and essentially throws it out the window. And we're going to break it down now for with NBC News medical correspondent Dr. John Torres and lead dietitian and manager of wellness nutrition services at Cleveland Clinic, Kristen Kirkpatrick. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Dr. John, Good morning. let me start with you, Dr. John. Ex explain the science, if you can, behind this new, this new metabolic data. Like, what, what does it mean, and how could we have been so wrong about it for so long? And you're right, Greg, this is turning things on its head because all along I thought the same thing. You know, as you start getting older, your metabolism slows down. Once you hit your 30s, you pack on a few extra pounds. Not much <laughs> you can do about it because it's your metabolism causing that to happen, even most so, more so when you're in your 40s and your 50s. But this study is saying not so fast. That's not what's happening, actually. And what they did is they looked at what we call the carbon dioxide expenditure. How much carbon dioxide are we burning off every day, which is a sign of our metabolism. In other words, the things we're doing to breathe, to digest food, just to live our basic metabolism and they looked at eight day olds up to 95 year olds to find out and what they found out is we do things in groups throughout our lives and it breaks down into four different categories 
from birth until one years old, we are metabolism machines. We are burning metabolism like it's nobody's business. But once we turn one until we turn 20, that starts slowing down about 3% a year. Didn't matter if you're a teenager, didn't matter where you were in that period, it slows down about 3% a year. But once you hit 20 until you get to 60, it stays the same, wow. regardless of what's happening, regardless of if you're a man or a woman, regardless if you're going through menopause, pregnancy, none of those things mm. influence that basic me metabolism. Mm. And then once you turn 60, it started slowing down again. So that's the key. And it turns out, again, when we're in our 30s and 40s, it's not the metabolism putting on those extra pounds. <laughs> Sorry. Lazy so, and eating yeah. too much. So, Kristen, <laughs> that, that then leads to the question, yeah, basically, calories and exercise, which w w things we pretty much know, that would be, I would think, the keys to helping improve our meta metabolic health over that 40-year span. Uh, yeah, definitely the key, but the, the real important point here looking at this data is that this is looking at total energy expenditure. So obviously it's looking at energy out, the calories burned, but we can't stop thinking about the calories in. Mm -hmm. The problem is we are really looking at our calories in the wrong way. We are a nation that is still very overweight and obese, despite the fact that we have a million different diets out there. But we are still consuming a lot of hyper palatable foods and we're still focusing on the quantity of calories. We need to shift the focus. What's hyper palatable? Hyper palatable foods are foods that very edible. Absolutely. <laughs> so you, you can't stop eating them. So I always say to my patients, there's a reason why you can stop eating a bowl of steamed broccoli, oh. but you can't stop eating a bag of potato chips. Ah. So we have data that shows that hyperpalatable foods actually hijack areas in the brain that cause mm. you to not have that feeling of fullness. And it's right. I'm ready to stop. So when we're eating these foods, we eat tons and tons of calories because our brain is not sending the message, hey, you need to stop eating. And so this is what we're focusing on. We really need to look at quantity as something that's not as important as quality. Quality is key, and that starts with eating real food. Wow. Good point. Um, I thought it was very interesting uh, that, you know, men and women, really, there is no difference between our metabolic rates. I always just assume men burn calories faster than women do. Uh, were there other myths that were debunked by this study? Yeah, for sure. Uh, one of the things that I really noticed is looking at menopausal women. So a lot of my patient base at Cleveland Clinic is postmenopausal, premenopausal women who come in and say, oh, gosh, I can't fit into my genes when I was 25. And the common thought was, well, of course, this is a normal aspect of aging. So this was really surprising that menopause didn't even impact the mm -hmm. metabolism. And it really does change the conversation that we as clinicians have and how we have to look at our dietary recommendations when we're counseling our patients. Dr. John, let's talk about the, the impact here potentially on future medical research, because I understand that this could actually affect drug dosages for, for children and older people going forward. Why would that be? And this could have a big impact because up until now, when we look at drugs, it's kind of a one size fits all. And we talk about giving dosing based on mainly on weight and on age type situations by grouping them in large age groups. But now what we're finding out, according to this study, is that the cells actually something happens inside the cells to drive that metabolism in those stages we talked about, particularly once you get past the age of 60. And because that's happening, that means our drugs are going to be handled differently in the cell level. And so we need to make sure that we're adjusting it appropriately. So I think in a future, you're going to find out that somebody, for instance, with high blood pressure, if they're in their 40s, they're going to have to get different dosing than if they're in their 70s, ah. just because of that metabolism effect that's happening there. Hey, Kristen, uh, uh, for those over 60, just asking for a friend, <laughs> uh, uh, what, what should those folks <laughs> me, be, be focusing on as, as we look ahead toward, you know, trying to stay as healthy as possible? Yeah, so for your friend, Al, what I would say <laughs> is that it's really important, again, to really focus on that real food. So Michael Pollan defines food as something that comes from nature, is fed from nature, and will eventually rot. So we really need to take out all of the, the millions of dietary recommendations that we have from, from social media and all these other places, not look at what is working for your friends, but what is working for you. Mm -hmm. I often tell my patients that the best diet for you is the one you can stick to. So I think we have to look at that and think, okay, if I'm over 60, my metabolism is gonna drop a little bit. And what can I do? I can eat more food. If you eat more food, you're getting more nutrient density, you're getting more fiber, that fills you up and it naturally lowers your calorie And counts. what about exercise? 
Yeah, the exercise was a surprise as well. So what we're finding here is that exercise is essential for heart health and reduction of certain cancers, but might not be the key to weight loss or even weight management. So you can't rely on exercise. I'm sure you've heard this before, but you can't outrun a bad diet. And oh. this is definitely true in something that we have seen in this study is that Exercise should be part of your overall lifestyle goals, but it shouldn't be what you're depending on to lose weight and to keep that weight off. As many people know, losing weight is not easy. Keeping it off is even more difficult. So we really have to look and really tighten yeah. up the fact that we can't use this excuse anymore. It's not our metabolism. Kristen Kirkpatrick, uh, great information. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning. Welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Stay connected and stream the news you need with Xfinity X5. Our top story is unfolding right now. The fast speed you depend on and a reliable connection for all your devices whenever and however you watch with Xfinity X5. Good morning. Welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are. <laughs> <laughs> today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. You accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Her weight loss video went viral with 12 million views. Take a look at this. Yeah, it was last November when certified fitness trainer Lucy Bergen started recording her weight loss journey, taking a daily image of herself wearing the same outfit, and she did it in an effort to inspire herself to get healthy. She did it for six months and lost a total of 35 pounds. And then, well, she posted it to TikTok and the rest, well, the rest is digital history. Lucy Bergen joins us now from Tampa, Florida. Lucy, what, what a cool idea. And now here we are, some 12 million views later, and you were showing up on good days, on bad days. What were you telling yourself when you were looking in the mirror, taking those pictures, taking those videos? What was I telling myself? I just kept telling myself that it wasn't a short-term goal. It wasn't a diet. It was a lifestyle change. And that's what's so important. And I love this video because it shows my bad days. It shows the days that I was bloating. Or you can mm. even see in my face if I had a rough day. And that's what life is. It's not about going on a diet and trying to lose 20 pounds in a week. It's not about the weight. It's about your mental health. And you can see in this video also, it's little changes at a time. Um, I didn't even notice my transformation until I put everything together. Mm, I bet. Um, so this all started like, I mean, for so many people gaining weight during COVID, putting on a few extra pounds, and then over six months you lost 35 pounds. So how, how did you do it? What were your tips and what, what advice do you have for others trying to lose some weight? All right, so my biggest piece of advice would be to get a friend or someone that you can have um, accountability with. My best friend and I did it together and we kept each other accountable. And so because of that, we were able to almost make a challenge out of it. Mm. And when it comes to that, um, it really helped me. And then when it comes to diet and working out, I was lifting heavy at first and eating carbs, proteins, things like that. Um, something that's actually really awesome is in the fitness world, we're taught, especially as women, that we should be eating 1,200 calories or even less. And I've had clients come to me saying they're eating about 500 calories a day. Mm. And what they don't know is that that actually like slows down your meta metabolism. Mm -hmm. 
and you need a certain amount of calories to have your body function properly. Just like you need to put gas into a car for it to run, yeah. you need to have fuel in your body for your body to burn fat. Yeah, Lucy, I would think uh, when you work out, when we, a lot of us see these trainers and they're all buff and they're in great shape, I, I think it would be more inspirational to be working out with somebody like you who's had the challenges themselves and knows what it's like for the, uh, the rest of us to try to get back into shape. Yes, sir. That's actually, um, I worked at a gym in New Jersey, and I specifically chose that gym because I knew that everyone coming to me was brand new to the fitness world. And I can't tell you the amount of conversations I would have with these amazing people who would come in and they would give me their why, their reason why they wanted to change. I mean, I had people telling me that they wanted to be a good example for their children or be able to fit in a pair of jeans for their honeymoon. And these reasons, like you could tell they were so special to in every individual that would come in and talk to me. And I sat and cried with some of these people because I've been there. And it is so hard to get started on this journey when you think that you're too far gone. Lucy, thank you. This, is, this has been so inspirational. Congratulations to you. And I and, uh, appreciate you spending some time with us this morning. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, oh. Yes, shop today with Joe Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Stay connected and stream the news you need with Xfinity X5. Our top story is unfolding right now. The fast speed you depend on and a reliable connection for all your devices whenever and however you watch with Xfinity X5. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You may have the urge to get back to the gym, hit the trails, or play some sports. But after all this time at home, your body may not be able to keep up with your brain. So here to help us get in shape and stay out of the doctor's office is orthopedic surgeon Dr. Vonda Wright. Doctor, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. I'm so glad to see you again. Well, Me it's too. good to see you. So, Doc, so for folks who may have maybe put the hit the pause button on exercise, want to get back into that that fitness routine, you say to be careful of the terrible twos, T-O-O-S. What do you mean? You know, after we've been inside for 18 months sitting at our desks, we are on weekend warrior overload, right? We want to get back. But what we do is we do too much at one time. We do it too often. We do it too soon. And unfortunately, that is a recipe for injuries. And I want you outside. I love you, but please don't come to my doctor's office because we've had the terrible twos. Mm. I mean, what, what, what kind of injuries are you seeing as an orthopedic surgeon, doctor? You know what? Uh, we've been sitting a long time. So that makes our cores weak, our rear ends weak. So we're having lots of knee pain, mm. ankle pain. We have hip bursitis. And we even see a lot of back pain. All of these, fortunately, can be treated 
and prevented. So on that note, for all of the people watching this morning who have all those pains that you just mentioned, I know you say mobility is our medicine. Can you give us a few things that we can all do to, to help? You know what, I love prescribing mobility as medicine. And so the first thing I want people to do every single day okay. is to dynamically warm up our major muscle groups, our hips, our knees. Look at this marvelous squat that's being done. That's we old do Brandon. Lunch. Brandon, Brandon. doing the perfect yeah. squat and lunge. <laughs> I mean, he's got great form. He's warming up every joint, the ankles, the knees, the hips. The other thing we need to do every single day is work on our balance. And we've mm. discussed before how we can do that simply by standing on one foot while mm -hmm. we brush our teeth. That's going to help prevent injury. So you also suggest uh, aerobic exercise three times a week. So how do we strengthen our stamina as we, we build to that? Absolutely. So you are going to be tempted to go outside, maybe go to Central Park and do what you've always done. But I want you to work back into it using a method we call speed play. So basically for 20 minutes, you are going to do five minute blocks. Okay. You can warm up for five minutes, which just means break a little sweat, get your heart rate going. And then for four minutes, speed up. Now, this doesn't have to be running. It can be rowing and cycling or even swimming, whatever you choose, mm -hmm. but four minutes and then completely rest. And okay. you can see how there's multiple levels. And once you work through one minute exertion, four minutes rest, two minutes exertion, three minutes rest, mm -hmm. eventually over about six weeks, you can get back to what you're used okay. to. Dr. Wright, you're also I know, concerned about strengthening all parts of the body. What's an effective way to do that? How often should we be doing that? You know, Craig, I like us to do total body uh, cross training about twice a week. Lean muscle mass is really important for us. And so things like static lunges that are being shown, planks are amazing for our core, which have gotten so weak as we've been sitting in a chair, and even plyometric exercises. If we do these twice a week in between our aerobic exercises, we're going to train the entire body yeah. and prevent injury. That's Natalie, our desk assistant. Thank you, Natalie. I'm doing what Natalie's Great. having. I'm looking at that video. <laughs> uh, so one more tip, I guess, what would you say to, to motivate us? I think, you know what, you have some people who, they're hardcore. They've been working out throughout the pandemic. Mm -hmm. If anything, they look better than ever, ever. And then you have the other folks who are just, they know they're supposed to work out. They just don't feel like it. They don't feel like sweating. They don't feel like being uncomfortable. What would you say? You know what, even as the mobility doctor, I understand that. Yeah. I have just done this six week track of trying to get back in shape, but you know what motivated me? I know that at the end of six weeks, not only am I gonna feel amazing, but maybe I get a pair of hot shoes. Oh, <laughs> that's cute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe we go to a date night that we haven't been out to for so long. An incentive. Yeah. We just get to see our friends. Hey doc, you go really quick, how important is sleep? Mm. Ah, Al, we have underestimated the power of sleep and restoration for generations. And I can tell you as a, you know, medical trainee, we thought it wasn't necessary. But Al, if you want to perform at peak performance, whether you're performing at your job or in exercise or even as your family, please prioritize about seven hours a night. Get a bedtime routine, same time every night. Get off our digital devices and allow ourselves to rest and restore mm. so that we can perform at the level that we're capable of. Rest and, rest and restore. There you go. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Stay connected and stream the news you need with Xfinity x -Fi. Our top story is unfolding right now. The fast speed you depend on. We begin with breaking news right now in Florida. And a reliable connection for all your devices. This story matters to all of us. Whenever and however you watch. A bite-sized mix of everything you love about all four hours of our show, but half the calories. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. With Xfinity x -Fi. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts.
Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Today. Future's looking yeah. right. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. <laughs> Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. We're out there, we're active, we're doing the thing, right? It's that we're not seeing ourselves represented in mainstream fitness, which is a disservice for all of us. Chrissy King is a personal trainer and fitness blogger who recently wrote an article about being black and body positive in an industry that trends white and thin. Why did you decide to write about this issue in particular? I was going to like fitness conferences and I'd be like one of the few only people of color and I just think it's so important because the benefits of wellness are for everyone, not just a particular type of people. Simone Samuels agrees. After discovering a passion for working out, she added fitness certifications to her two law degrees. I almost didn't get into this industry because I didn't see myself represented. First of all, will gyms even hire me? Two, will people even come to my class? Are people gonna think, oh, she's a little fluffy. I'm not gonna get a good workout. I'm gonna go find somebody else. Simone talked with Chrissy for her article. And you say, quote, being big and black in an industry that's overwhelmingly white and thin means being awkwardly visible and frustratingly invisible. You're an instructor now. Do you still feel this way? Most fitness instructors are, I mean, understandably, thin and six pack and really athletic looking. If you see somebody with a six pack, you think they're fit. If you see somebody with a bare belly, you think, oh, they are not fit and they're eating too many Cheetos. When we, we know now that you can't look at somebody's appearance to know whether or not they are fit, whether or not they are healthy. And that's also kind of why I got into fitness. So people could see that, yeah, I could do a side plank too. And I, I could run too. And I could teach three classes back to back too. For both of these ladies, wellness is more than the number on the scale and body positivity is a lifestyle. Where is the line between accepting yourself and then wanting to be a better version of yourself? For me, body positivity, real, genuine body positivity should uh, compel you to engage in joyful, healthful movements. It should compel you to want to move out of respect for your body. It should compel you to want to eat good, healthy variety of foods out of respect for your body. My thing with health at every size is like, how am I feeling and living my best nourished life and getting to that better version of myself where I'm feeling good in my skin every day. And if weight loss is a byproduct, so be it. But when you make weight loss the goal, you can get to that goal and still have a whole host of other issues that you're not happy with, have a negative relationship with food, have a negative relationship with your body, have a negative relationship with exercise. So let's make how we want to feel the focus and let the chips fall where they fall. Chrissy and Simone believe conversations about race and size benefits everyone in the fitness community. My goal is to let people know, black people, black women, we're here in the space. We deserve to be here. And not only that, we need to be a part of the mainstream. And um, if you're not black or a person of color, you need to understand these other perspectives. Because again, you are helping most likely clients that don't look like you. And if you're not having these conversations, if you're not coming to these realizations, if you're not doing some education around these topics, you could be harming people for one and also turning people away from fitness spaces where they need to be. And for Simone, showing up has made an impact. The response has been overwhelmingly positive. One lady, she came to me after class and she's like, I love that you look like me. And that was so affirming to me to hear that people feel like they are welcome in these spaces because they're instructor has a little bit of a tummy. Since the pandemic, she has been leading classes online. I want people to know that fitness does not have a size, neither does health. I want people to know that you don't have to exercise for weight loss, that you can exercise out of the joy of having a body. And I also want people to start to think about accessibility. How do we make our fitness spaces accessible to people regardless of gender and race and color and socioeconomic background, not only in terms of our actual gym, but also in terms of our teacher trainings so that we have diversity across the board. It's bigger than just 
getting out there and, and linking up and running. 32-year-old Lance Woods, a project manager for a local nonprofit, and 30-year-old consultant Joe Robinson are both enthusiastic runners from Detroit, introduced two years ago. One of my friends saw that we were both participating in the Miami Marathon, and then they put us together. Motivated by a love for their hometown, the Fast Friends created a running club in May of 2019, proudly boasting their area code called We Run 313. We Run Detroit! We Run 313! In our very first run, we had over 100 people show up. And they've kept it going, with an average 200-plus runners at weekly events, including their popular Two Mile Tuesdays. Joe, your slogan is connect, run, build. What does that mean? What it means is short for our mission, connecting like-minded individuals through running to build a happier, healthier community. We want to bring people together who want change. Change to them means seeing more runners who look like themselves at races. Let's say if it's 20,000 people, you might come across a sprinkle of black people in those races. And in a city like Detroit, that's 85% black. We don't see black people running. We have the power to change that. No! But the pair's primary goal? Helping residents reap benefits like lowering risk of heart disease and diabetes and improved mental health. How has this shaped you physically and mentally? Running has been the most transformative process. I mean, whether it was mild depression or anxiety, running has just helped me deal with those things in a different way. And I feel stronger than ever. I feel smarter than ever, obviously faster than ever. And I just feel like I'm who I'm supposed to be. Is this for people who are all ages, all running levels? And yes, it is for runners of all levels. We have people from six all the way up into 65, all paces, all sizes, all races. And the impact that we got from We Run 313, it surprises us to this day. We're seeing lifelong friendships being formed. We're seeing people start businesses. We're seeing people not only start businesses, but meet their clients at our runs. We're seeing relationships. Hopefully we'll get a marriage out of the run club soon. <laughs> People come to us and tell us personal stories about how it's changed them from the inside out. The greatest thing is that you're not doing it alone. Oh. The beautiful thing about it is that you have a whole community of support. We're encouraging one another. If you've fallen behind, we got pace leaders that's going to say, come on, come on, you got this. Job, All the way through. How did the pandemic impact your mission? When everything shut down, um, Joe and I, we was encouraging people, to, hey, this is a great time for you to take your health serious, get out there and get outdoors and run. We started a run solo campaign with COVID-19. It made us look at things from more of a, a macro level rather than just micro in, in the city of Detroit. And we started to engage people um, nationally. Today, Lance and Joe are committed to going the distance for those ready to follow their lead. If somebody told you that this was what you would be looking at two years ago, what would you have thought? <laughs> it would have been very difficult to believe. But now I know. Running has led me to believe anything is possible, especially when it's in the name of progress, when it's in the name of positivity, and when it's in the name of change. We run 313! In a small office space in Roslyn Heights, New York, hair is everywhere. You've got every color here. Every you know, color. It's dark blonde, brown every color. One. Ponytails piled up through the pandemic. I'm gonna say probably 60,000. 60,000 ponytails. When wig factories shut down because of COVID, donations to Hair We Share sat in boxes. And now as people head out for their first haircut in more than a year, it's like nothing they've seen before. I average anywhere between 75 and 100 ponytails a day. Hair donations nationwide are up more than 135%. People were sitting home feeling desperate. They wanted to go out and they wanted to help people. When was your last haircut? Yeah, about three months before the pandemic. Brian Cohen never thought about donating hair, but when it got past his ears, he got an idea. It kept going and I was like, you know what, why don't we do this thing? A few snips. Woo. There she is. Nice. Number one. 
and Brian's hair is one step closer to someone in need, like Pamela Barr in North Carolina, who's had alopecia and breast cancer and loves her custom wig. When you look at yourself in the mirror now, what do you think? Well, I see myself as beautiful. I don't feel insecure anymore. For $145, the cost of processing the ponytail, Hair We Share offers a tracking program so people can see where their hair goes. Being able to see the recipient, putting a face to that person, it really hits home. This one's from Texas, Arizona. Virginia Beach. These are from all over. They've gotten donations from around the world and beyond. Astronaut Christina Cook sent her hair back from the International Space Station. So normally the minimum to donate to Hair We Share is eight inches, but because people went so long during the pandemic without getting their hair cut, like our producer Katie here, they are getting much, much more. It takes seven to 10 donations to make each wig. Many go to kids and come from them too. Olivia has a very personal reason for wanting to donate. Since my mom had cancer, I decided it was a really nice thing to do because my mom said one of the hardest parts was looking in the mirror with like and having no hair and thinking just about cancer. It's just so emotional. You don't want to be different. You don't yeah. want to look different or seem different, not outside in the world, not inside in your home. For the recipient, it's about much more than hair. They are giving back confidence. For the donor, it's a way to do something after a year when even haircuts were near impossible. What do you think you would say to the person who's going to be getting a wig? I hope you like it and hope that it exceeds your expectations. <laughs> going to great lengths to give back. Oh, and there it is. That's a lot of hair. <laughs> a pandemic silver lining. For today, Kristen Dahlgren, NBC News. Oh, it's been so neat to see some things like that come out of the pandemic that just make such a difference to people. I like the words of Pamela there, one of the cancer survivors saying, I now see myself mm. as beautiful. I'm no longer insecure. Mm. Standing on this Olympic podium is a lifelong dream for these athletes, and it begins at a very early age. Hopefuls like rising fifth grader, 10-year-old Davis Petty, who is already winning tournaments in golf. I think golf is, you know, the best sport. The thing that I like most about the sport is that you can play it solo and you can play it, you know, with a partner. You know, that's the fun. So he was about 18 months old and we got him a bat and a wiffle ball and he would take it and hit it like a golf club. So uh, we got him some plastic clubs and it was on ever since. <laughs> we just started taking him to the golf course and just letting him hit balls. About five or six, it started to get real serious and he started to play competitively. We were like, wow, we've really got something here. My practice is almost every day, about five hours. He makes straight A's, and if he didn't, I may not let him be on the golf course as much as he is. We have certain expectations as parents, but we don't push him. He's won his last four big tournaments. It's been incredible to watch, and he also has a great attitude, which is what I'm probably most proud of. When I'm nervous, that means I really care, and that's when I'm trying my hardest. Eight-year-old Mila Song has been participating in gymnastics for more than half her life. I started when I was three. I love gymnastics because I get to cheer on my friends. It's not a solo, it's a team effort. Around two, she was already like doing cartwheels and flips and always trying, and, and so we knew at a young age that she was into it. I love doing tricks. My favorite tricks are my front tucks and my aerials. And I'm flying through the air, I feel like I have a lot of power. We're holding our breath. We're kind of on the, on the edge of our seats, watching her compete. When I fall off the beam, I get right back up because that's what it takes. And that's what a champion is. Mila has been climbing the ranks. She recently won the Washington State Bolt Championship and has been recruited for the TOPS program, a national talent search for female gymnasts ages 7 to 10. I do this because I love it. My hero in gymnastics is Sunny Lee. She's part of the mom community, which we're part of too. It really opens her eyes like, hey, look, there's another mom girl on TV competing for a gold uh, medal. It just makes the dream that much more achievable. Watching the Tour de France on TV is what started seven-year-old Jamison Torrance's love of cycling. I love the sport of cycling because I get to be outside. You get good exercise and you get to go fast. 
Well, this started when Jameson was probably two or three. He always wanted to go faster and longer than everyone else who wanted to ride. We both thought that he's really gonna go places with this. My first mile was kind of easy. It got hard in about 11 miles because your legs get sore. I ride up to 18 miles in one day. My dad, my grandpa, and my uncle started riding with me. I take great pride in it. It's like, wow, we have three generations of Torrance boys here riding. My dad actually set up the bicycle trainer in their living room while they're riding the Tour de France on the TV. So he would imagine that he was riding with them. When he sees some of these guys reaching into their back pockets and getting energy bars, he actually had us load up his cycle jersey with energy bars so that he could practice like the other cyclists do. On the days that I get tired, I put in the effort anyways. Even when my legs get sore, I push through it. Next, I hope to ride up to 20 miles. And while he's still too young to compete officially, he's excited for the future. He's ready to kill it as soon as he's able. What I'm thinking about right now is going to the PGA Tour and uh, maybe uh, be a future Olympian. You know, I would love to, you know, represent my country. I want to go pro so I can see the world. I'm going to keep training so one day I can be an Olympian. I hope the future brings for me to go to the Olympics one day. I got a medal and I, and I got a flower. Wow, great job. <laughs>
you never know who's struggling. Sometimes it is your next door neighbor. And so I really think about how much dignity comes with food. Like food's a right, it's not a privilege. You should be able to walk up to a pantry and, and, grab, a, and grab something and not feel guilty about it. I think that's what some people need. They just need a little boost. Food, you know, not only just feeds our bodies, the food also nourishes our souls. And if we can start educating people on the culturally relevant foods that can be placed into pantries, that also offers an access point that food banks have a difficult time doing because they're working in such large quantities of food. Spaghetti and tomato sauce may be relevant to one neighborhood, but fish sauce and curry may be more appropriate for another. During this pandemic, I've seen a lot more neighbor to neighbor, just really small kindnesses that I think people were maybe too busy to think about before. That's one of the things that I think it's kind of like blessing in disguise, you know, and I hope that that continues past this, that we don't like just go back to normal. Positive Tomorrows is a nonprofit uh, which basically addresses the needs of homeless families. Our primary program is that of a private school for children who come from homeless families. I think what we're going to see as we move ahead in the next several months is a continued increase in the number of people who just get left behind. And the problem only gets worse if we don't pay attention. This is Kiara. Um, this is my oldest. She is 10. When I thought I was all alone and down, they were definitely the people that picked me back up. They were initially living in uh, one of the local homeless shelters. So we helped move them into housing. As she was able to, to begin to work, and she had developed a relationship with, uh, with her partner, and this fella is working, and uh, we've been really, really pleased to see that they, were, they bought their own house. I mean, that's a huge thing. We have families who, they never even dream of being able to buy their own house. We did get a grant and um, we used part of that to pay some bills off that we knew were going to be coming up during me not working. And then we used the rest to fund and we got blankets for the homeless and we were able to feed almost 300 people. That is really good to do this, to help other people. And we can look back on this when you grow up and tell our kids about it. Hi. Hi, Mom. How are you? Good. I definitely know being judged for certain situations, and people can't help their situations sometimes. We see families who are very grateful for what they have. It may not be very much. And we see families who are willing to share when they have a little bit extra. And this is one family who did. I love it. What the fuck? And the next big thing that we are working on is 500 bags of school supplies to give away. So if I can teach my kids how to be selfless and to give back, that's what I'm here to do. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines, so crucial for reopening America. A big day around here, a very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! 
Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends at Today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, that's just shop Today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The big thing that brought me to Summit Achievement was how withdrawn I was. I had a lot of issues with self-control and with substance abuse. I'm actually here because of my video game addiction. My anxiety and depression were at a point where I would just spend like most of my days in my room, like only coming out for like breakfast, lunch, and dinner, wasting my life away. <laughs> So they're grouped by what they are working on, a group with anxiety, and they're working with other students who are dealing with anxiety or substance use. Primarily, it's anxiety and depression. The average day is six to eight weeks. There's more and more research showing us that just spending time in nature is good for people's mental health, and especially young people. Amanda and I just scoped out camp, and we're planning on doing K-TARP over there. I started in the field as a clinical social worker at a mental health center. Then I went on to work at a boarding school. I was a therapist and also ran a lot of the outdoor programming. Back in those early days, you didn't see a lot of kids with anxiety. It was much more oppositional, defiant, anger outbursts and um, drug abuse. But more recently, I would say in the last 10 years, they're not refusing to go to school to use drugs or hang out and party with their friends. They're afraid to go to school. They're anxious about going to school. There's triggers related to school. And so they just feel like they can't go there and they refuse. Most of our students at Summit have been doing very well in their lives up till about seventh, eighth, and ninth grade when the executive demands and the sh social demands of school become greater and greater. Well, when I first came here, I was a little nervous. I mean, I've had therapy sessions before in my life, but never, including wilderness, I was kind of just like, what? My views on it to start weren't super positive. You know, I was kind of dreading it. It's something I was getting pulled away from my home and ev everything I kind of knew. You brought a kitchen kit? Yeah. Even though there are still those kind of negatives, I've kind of opened up to a lot of the positives and seen like what it really can help me with. We've got a hypothetical line parallel to that this line right here. Yeah. Three days a week, they are at our facility, living in dorm settings, they're meeting with their therapist, and they are going to school. Hey everybody, let's make sure that we pack out the food. And so every Thursday, they go out on expedition, where they're challenged to go out backpacking and camping. All right, everyone, let's go. We take our students out winter backpacking. We're hiking with snowshoes on. And when you're carrying a 40 pound pack, that is a very athletic activity. And then on top of that, they're also sleeping outside, you know, in the snow. And um, we set up tarps. Spending that time in the woods gets rid of a lot of distractions of today's world and gives students the time and the space to process what's going on in their life. It seems pretty absurd if you're hearing about it for the first time, but a big part of it is just sitting with the discomfort of being out there, being able to just witness really beautiful things. Uh, harnesses look good. When you're out in the woods, you just realize that 
It's just you, your team, and the wilderness around you. It's a little scary at first, but having the open sky around you, trees all around you, like, it's amazing. Every expedition is about resiliency. It's about self-worth. It's about confidence. And they have to learn how to take care of themselves. And that's what we have to do in life. And we have to learn to um, deal with difficult situations. Maybe we can do like a little emotional check-in of where we're at right now. Everyone's here because they have issues that they're dealing with. And we like to talk about those issues when we're on trail. I meet with students for at least three hours face-to-face -face a week. We're right there alongside them. We will hike with them. We will uh, eat dinner with them. And that relationship building process is so important and that we're not asking them to do anything that we wouldn't be willing to do. At intake, all of our students are given uh, several assessments both at the beginning of treatment at the, and at the end of treatment. And our hope is to be able to capture you know, where a student is at when they enter treatment and where is a student at when they are getting ready to discharge. Working with my therapist here, I have gotten a bunch of coping skills and ways to calm down myself when I'm in a episode or something, or like a panic attack. Now, any time that I'm having a hard moment, something I do that seriously helps so much is, um, I'm like, yeah, like this is kind of tough, but at least it's not raining on me right now. I've got one thing going for me. And then I, I can start coming up with a lot more. When insurance companies start reimbursing more and more, there'll be more wilderness programs. There's a recent study by the University of New Hampshire that is showing that it's actually less expensive with less relapse if a young person goes to wilderness therapy than a traditional facility. And I think we're all coming to the realization that sitting in an office in, with an adolescent isn't all that effective. There is nothing like summiting a mountain and seeing a view to make you feel really good. Whenever we would get to the top of a mountain, I would like take some space and like go sit down and just like look out. And I would flash back to like my room, like just looking at the wall, like that's not beautiful. And I look out in front of me and just see like this beautiful landscape. I'm like, okay, so this is what the world has to offer. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Good morning. Welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> bad. <laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Good morning, welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> bad. <laughs> make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show. <laughs> in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right, I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. I'm the founder of Therapy Dogs of Long Island. We have about 18 handlers now, and we work in a lot of different types of facilities, hospitals, nursing homes, schools, <laughs> and we saw over 13,000 people last year. I don't think you can make a dog do dog therapy. You can train them, but they have to love it. Terry's here with Pumpkin, and we're going to read our story. So we do reading to dogs when we go to the uh, grammar schools. I can see you. 
a nurse. Very good. Reading to dogs has really made them feel much better about reading out loud because it decreases their anxieties, and that's the bottom line. So it's for kids who have issues reading. When you read to a dog, they're not judgmental. It takes away that fear. And it's also the comfort of holding a dog when you're reading or petting a dog while you're reading. It relaxes you. Super job reading. We had this one little kid, and the book was on the ground. The dog stepped on the book. He goes, that dog has no regard for that author. <laughs> On, I go. have three let's dogs. Go. Their names are Barbie, Ken, and Pumpkin. And they're all certified therapy dogs. Each one has their own gift. So Ken is very obedient. He'll visit when you ask him to, but he's not going to be in your face. Good, good job. Barbie is the quintessential therapy dog. She is super friendly, but she's gonna come right up to you and she's gonna lean on you and she's gonna put her face in your face. She is just gonna love you up. And Pumpkin is small and she's afraid of nothing. And uh, she loves children and babies. The reason I started to become a therapy dog handler was because of Lily. Not a good uh, prognosis. Um, they usually only live to two and a half years. I discovered that her brother could make her smile. And for her to smile, that was a huge thing. And I just felt that the energy of dogs and children were similar. And I said I was gonna get therapy dogs and visit her. She's in a wheelchair and I took her hand and put it on Ken's head and she started processing right away. And we've been visiting every week since. Give him a big hug. Give him a big hug. She responds, she'll smile. You know, these are things that she doesn't normally do, but she does when the dogs are there. Dogs are the best medicine. They just cheer you up inside and bring back a lot of good memories. <laughs> oh, the dog is so cute. They'll start to engage where with a human, there might not be any engagement. How are you, pretty girl? What other instance can you go over to something that's living and breathing, uh, get love from them, pet them, hug them, and they don't care what your mental capacity is, or what your physical looks are. It's that unconditional love and non-judgment, I think, that brings the most joy. Barbie! High pitch, high pitch. It's her favorite thing to get petted. Rosa, one of the students, contacted us to get the dogs in once a month. There was people in my class that were mourning visibly and the whole school just had that kind of feel to it. There seems to be a stigma around mental illness, especially with teenagers who don't know much about it. And so I was thinking of a way to make mental health resources more palatable. And so I thought of therapy dogs. Gives love freely and receives the love back. Since we started visiting schools, more and more schools are asking for therapy dogs and they are really seeing the impact and now they're starting to get their own dogs, which is what they need. They really need a dog in school every day. If you can bring joy to people in any circumstance, why wouldn't you? Mmm, they look good, don't real they? Nice. They look real good. I love and what we, you've done with your hair. <laughs> we love that you're tuning into our, our favorite streaming channel today all day. We're halfway through the mm -hmm. week, folks. Hoda and I are right here in the studio. You're at home right now mm -hmm. watching our digital show, or maybe you're on the road, but you're watching today in 30, and we've got another packed half hour ahead. It's starting with, unfortunately, the new COVID outbreak shutting down schools mm -hmm. just as the new year begins, and the alarm being sounded now over several new strains of the virus. We've got a full report. Yeah, then we'll also have an inside look at what's next for pop star Britney Spears. This after her father suddenly asked the judge to end the controversial court order that controls her life right now. And then the lovely Jessica Chastain stopped by to tell us about her new series. It's getting a lot of buzz. And on the fourth hour, it's Wednesday, so that means Trends Day. You knew that? I love Wednesday, Trends Day. Love that. We're breaking.
Friends Day Wednesday. We're oh. breaking down all the hot topics That's what I for said. you. So let's hit play because it's time for <laughs> Today in 30. Now we move to the pandemic and concerns the coronavirus has still not peaked. This is more children are getting infected. And yet another dangerous strain has emerged from coast to coast. NBC national correspondent Miguel Almaguer is in Los Angeles for us with more. Miguel, good morning. Savannah, good morning. Some are calling this the perfect storm, the convergence of cold and flu season, just as more children head back to school and a new COVID strain emerges, even as the Delta variant still thrives. Today, President Biden's expected to outline a six prong approach to fight the highly contagious variant. As the country struggles to get the COVID surge fueled by the Delta variant under control, now concerns about the virus mutating yet again. The WHO recently labeled the mu strain as a variant of interest. It's been found in nearly every state in the U.S., though still far less common than Delta. The WHO has labeled at least nine different variants as of concern or interest as COVID continues to rage. It's continuously evolving, trying to find the right key, sort of like a locksmith molding a key to break through the gates of our own immune defenses. Some data suggests mu could be resistant to antibodies or vaccines, though more research is needed. Dr. Fauci says the government doesn't consider the mu variant an immediate threat, but notes that as long as a significant number of Americans aren't vaccinated, COVID will develop increasingly dangerous variants. As long as the virus keeps circulating like that, you give it the opportunity to mutate, and when it mutates, you can form another variant which might actually escape the protection of the vaccines. One of the populations most at risk, those who can't get vaccinated, children under 12. Just as more kids head back to the classroom, the number of child COVID cases is skyrocketing across the country. I love you. You're gonna be good in school. The American Academy of Pediatrics says last week more than 250,000 children tested positive for the virus. That's more than a quarter of all new cases nationwide. While it appears severe illness is more uncommon in kids, COVID outbreaks have already led to 1,400 school closures in 35 states. And Miguel, you mentioned the president set to outline a new strategy on fighting the Delta variant. What more do we know about it? Well, the president's expected to call for more help from public and private sectors, which could include vaccine mandates to boost the vaccination numbers. The latest count from the CDC shows nearly 177 million Americans are now fully vaccinated. Yeah. Savannah. Miguel, thank you very much. Stick around because there's much more coming up on Today in 30. Stay connected and stream the news you need with Xfinity X5. Our top story is unfolding right now. The fast speed you depend on and a reliable connection for all your devices, whenever and however you watch with Xfinity X5. Stay connected and stream the news you need with Xfinity X5. Our top story is unfolding right now. The fast speed you depend on. We begin with breaking news right now in Florida. And a reliable connection for all your devices. This story matters to all of us. Whenever and however you watch. Our bite-sized mix of everything you love, about all four hours of our show, but half the calories. Oh, yeah. oh yes. With Xfinity X5. Stay connected and stream the news you need with Xfinity X5. Our top story is unfolding right now. The fast speed you depend on and a reliable connection for all your devices, whenever and however you watch with Xfinity X5. Good morning. Welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> <bad. Exactly. laughs> Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. 
Now to a major development in the battle over Britney Spears' freedom. Yeah, her father has now filed a petition to end her con conservatorship entirely. It is an unexpected twist in a legal drama that's been playing out for mm -hmm. years. NBC News Now anchor Joe Fryer joins us with the details on this. This was a bit of a stunner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is a big development. So after 13 years under a conservatorship led by her father, Jamie, Britney Spears could soon reclaim control over her fortune and her life. While their father had already agreed to step down as conservator, his new request to free his daughter from the conservatorship altogether is being seen as a potentially huge victory for Team Britney. What do we want? What do we want it? Britney Spears could soon be a free woman to spend her life and her money however she wants. For the past 13 years, Britney's father, Jamie Spears, has been part of a strict conservatorship in charge of her $60 million estate. The conservatorship was put into place after several public breakdowns, but that could soon change. Late Tuesday, Jamie Spears filed a petition, which has been seen by NBC News, that states his daughter is entitled to have this court now seriously consider whether this conservatorship is no longer required. Adding that Britney's circumstances have changed to such an extent that grounds for establishing of a conservatorship may no longer exist. The petition also argues that Britney should not be required to undergo a new psychological evaluation to terminate the guardianship, something the 39-year-old pop star told the court she refuses to do. Britney has tried to remove her father from his conservator role twice in the last two years. And in recent months, she gave explosive testimony in court where she pleaded for her conservatorship to end. In emotional testimony, she called it abusive, alleging she's been forced to perform, take antidepressants, and was prevented from removing an IUD meant to stop pregnancy. Jamie Spears insists he had nothing to do with his daughter's alleged bad treatment. There's a lot that people don't know. Renewed interest in the star's well-being was ignited by a New York Times documentary framing Britney Spears, released earlier this year. Since then, the Free Britney movement has exploded with a growing number of famous friends and fans joining the chorus. Even the Princess of Pop herself has taken to social media using the hashtag Free Britney to celebrate recent courtroom victories. Some of Britney's supporters are cautiously optimistic. It's not truly going to be a victory until she actually is emancipated and has the opportunity if she wants to to pursue action against some of the people that she feels have wronged her. Spears' new attorney is calling the filing vindication, but adds in part, it appears that Mr. Spears believes he can try to avoid accountability and justice, but as we assess his filing, our investigation will continue. The battle not yet over, but freedom for Brittany seemingly within reach. So, Joe, I mean, any sense of what might have caused this change of heart? Clearly, Britney's lawyers aren't exactly buying it mm -hmm. uh, from, from the father. Yeah, his lawyer outlined a few examples recently that showed they say Britney was capable of maintaining a level of independence that wouldn't require a conservatorship. They argue she demonstrated that by doing things like driving herself around, choosing her own lawyer, which shows the court trusts her with major decisions, that maybe she can make her own business decisions. Now, Britney's release from the conservatorship still needs court approval the next hearing on the matter is scheduled for later this month, hmm. September 29th. All right, Joe, thank you very much. Stay connected and stream the news you need with Xfinity X5. Our top story is unfolding right now. The fast speed you depend on. We begin with breaking news right now in Florida. And a reliable connection for all your devices. This story matters to all of us. Whenever and however you watch. Our bite-sized mix of everything you love, about all four hours of our show, but half the calories. Oh, yeah. oh yes. With Xfinity X5. Stay connected and stream the news you need with Xfinity X5. Our top story is unfolding right now. The fast speed you depend on and a reliable connection for all your devices whenever and however you watch with Xfinity X5. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Stay connected and stream the news you need with Xfinity X5. Our top story is unfolding right now. The fast speed you depend on and a reliable connection for all your devices whenever and however you watch with Xfinity X5. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. 
Stay connected and stream the news you need with Xfinity X5. Our top story is unfolding right now. The fast speed you depend on and a reliable connection for all your devices, whenever and however you watch with Xfinity X5. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. So all this week, we're going on the job with people who aren't really working your typical office job, <laughs> shall we say. So this morning, our Natalie Morales caught up with an award-winning photographer who is making quite a splash. Literally, quite a splash. Good hey, morning, Nat. Matt. Good morning, guys. Yeah, that's right. Renee Capazzola was named Underwater Photographer of the Year just a few months ago. She is the first woman and the first American to hold that prestigious title. And amazingly, underwater photography isn't even her primary profession. The first time that I went scuba diving, it was like a whole new world opened up for me. For Renee Capazzola, dipping below the ocean's surface is almost spiritual. What do you love about that sensation of being in the water? I feel at peace when I'm in the water. I feel relaxed, um, and I also feel a sense of adventure. Hoping to capture that feeling, Renee started taking photographs of her marine life discoveries. So you never had a photography class? No. When I first started shooting, it was just experimenting. It was like a hobby with just this cheap little compact camera. And then over time, as I became more interested in the photography and I got better equipment, I started acquiring books on photography and um, online articles. I picked up a lot of tips um, from various people over the years. Renee started submitting her work to photo contests, mostly, she says, so she'd have an opportunity to write articles and share her other passion, marine biology. The end result is that carbon is highly reactive. She's been teaching the subject to high school students for the last 18 years. Her real world experience helping to frame their studies. I see her pictures all around their classroom and they really bring to light what we shouldn't take for granted in our oceans. It enhances um, our classroom discussions. Being a biology teacher and being familiar with the importance of marine ecosystems to you know, see the deterioration of coral reefs, pollution, and the effects of overfishing, and to see that stuff personally in the ocean. I became very passionate about wanting to use my pictures, which I think are a powerful tool, to get people's attention and to raise awareness about conserving the marine environments. Renee might have stumbled into photography as a profession, but her approach to capturing those striking images is anything but casual. That's especially true for this winning shot, the one that recently earned her the title of Underwater Photographer of the Year. Tell me about capturing that perfect shot and how much work it took for that little moment. I had done a lot of um, shooting in that location before, which was in French Polynesia. For this particular trip, which was in August of 2020, I really wanted to do something creative and different. And I also wanted to you know, show sharks in a positive light to raise awareness, to protect these animals that, that need protection, that need conservation. It took numerous attempts over about a two week period. Did you know right away, like, oh, I just got it. Yeah, Did you know, actually feeling? sometimes I do, but not, not on that particular night, not until I went back and actually looked like through the camera and put it on the computer, then I thought that I had something. Despite underwater conditions being less than optimal on this cloudy day, we decided to give it a go here on California's Catalina Island. Tell me about your lens here and, and what, you're, what you can shoot with this. Yeah, so what I've got on here is a wide angle lens and then I've got a large um, dome port which works well, especially for the half and half shots or the split shots, mm -hmm. um, where you can see half above the surface and half below. And I was hoping to do some of those shots with you um, when we first get in. It's cold. Oh. <laughs> okay, let's go for it. All right. <laughs> And after some time in the brisk water, Renee let me star in one final shot, picture perfect. 
Pretty cool shot there, guys. Now, when Renee isn't teaching here in Southern California, she's researching her next trip and planning her next photo shoots, usually with her husband and two sons in tow. It's a vacation for them, but for her, it's work, but it's truly what she loves to do. And she says that oh. in the 17 years that she's been diving, she has never once felt frightened by a shark. Wow. I believe her, but I can't say the same. <laughs> I don't think I could be as brave. I mean, swimming with that guy? No, the, not the turtle. Yeah. The shark. Oh, I was going to say. <laughs> How close Turtles was she to the shark? So does that camera, you know, let her kind of take pictures from a distance? It's really cool because what it allows her to do, it's got that dome. So mm -hmm. that's her specialty is that split shot where you can see, you know, above, you yeah. know, you mm -hmm. see that skyline oh view, gosh. but then also underwater. And it's just really amazing how much, you know, and how close they are to the surface. Yeah, yeah. You don't that's what I, I noticed. Right there. <laughs> the sharks were pretty close. Does to she the sell yeah. the photographs? Does she sell exactly. them or does she just keep them? Well, for the most part, she does sell some photos. Yes, yeah, she does have a website set up, Renee Capazola, but she also, um, her real intention is all about conservation mm -hmm. and her messaging. And she says she personally has seen, you know, the devastation in the mm -hmm. oceans by, mm -hmm. you know, just seeing, for example, the coral reefs and how they've been stripped and shark populations, how sure. they've been decimated. So. That's her real intention is putting her art out there and her messaging, which she writes a lot of articles now yeah. about as well. That's awesome. Because of her photos. Really the picture cool she story, took of you is really cool. That's a key for Really a cool. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for that. Thank that you, was Natalie. terrific. Thanks. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Natalie. Mm. We are so excited because this morning we are catching up with a multi-talented actress. Jessica Chastain earned an Oscar nomination for her role in The Help. And then she went on to win a Golden Globe for her portrayal of a CIA agent in Zero Dark Thirty. Well, now Jessica is starring in the highly anticipated HBO drama Scenes from a Marriage. She plays Mira, a tech executive struggling with the ebbs and flows of marriage to her husband, played by Oscar Isaac. Let's talk about it right now. No. Let's talk. It's too late. Come on, let's talk. Jonathan, it's too It's too Mira, late. Mira, I know that I have, I've made my fair share of mistakes, okay? And I take no. responsibility for that. No, 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 don't go there. You don't position. have any responsibility. I, I, you didn't make any mistakes, and I didn't make any mistakes, and I'm not going to get into blame, because if we do that, I will go crazy. So this isn't anyone's fault. It's just the way that it is. Jessica, good morning. It's good morning. so nice to see you. Good morning, everybody. We're in person. Yes, I know. Oh, I love this. You just flew in from Venice? Yeah, and, and I was at the festival. Here? Oh, this oh, is goodness. terrific. So this is a, a remake of that 70s Ingmar Bergman uh, movie. How, how is this one different? Well, the original explores gender in a relationship in the 1970s, mm -hmm. and this one explores it in 2020. Mm -hmm. And a lot, so much has changed sure. for women and men. Um, and so it's interesting. And we've done a little bit of a flip-flop with what the character's behavior. So it'll be interesting to revisit. Your facial expression was good with that one. It's like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yes. clearly we just saw from that scene, I mean, this is a, a very emotional role. You yeah. even said it kind of tested your friendship mm. with uh, Oscar Isaac. How, how so? I mean, well, you are acting. <laughs> yeah, we're acting, but also Oscar and I have been friends. We went to college together, so we've been friends more than half of our lives. Wow. Mm -hmm. And we know so much about each other, so we know how to make each other laugh mm -hmm. without even saying anything. We can almost read each other's minds. But it also means we could, like, hurt each other wow. really strongly. So, like, we in the scenes, we would know how to get to the other one. Before the first, you know, I play a character who's the breadwinner in the family in the very first episode, sometimes before action, I would turn to Oscar, who plays the a main um, caregiver of our child, and be like, the house looks really, really messy. <laughs> Why didn't you clean it? <laughs> and he was always like, <laughs> You know how to dig. There you go. Yeah, I know how to dig it. Well, so speaking of, speaking of that chemistry, can we please talk about this video, Jessica? So, what are you holding your head? So yesterday, true story, I'm on Instagram. <laughs> And it took over my Instagram feed. I'm not, I promise the goodness. <laughs> I know. Let me just say, though, this is a slow motion yes. Yes. video. Yes. And everything yeah, no, is yeah, super yeah, yeah. sexy and but it, was, 
<laughs> but you had fun with it. I saw on Twitter. Yeah. You guys are, you know, happily married or what have you. But, to, it, yeah, what was To this? other people. To other, yes. other people. Yes. Yeah. yes, let's make that clear. Sorry. <laughs> happily yeah. married to other people. But now that you gave us the backdrop of the friendship, it all it yeah. kind of makes sense. I mean, it, I think it was really funny because when you look at it in regular <laughs> speed. This is your piece. <laughs> I'm looking straight ahead, and he, like, looks over at me, and he just kind of goes to give me, like, a peck on my elbow, and at the same time, I'm going to give him a uh, hug. Oh. So all of a sudden, his face ends it's up in so my armpit. Yeah. Almost then, like after, he's sniffing you. No, but he made a joke out of it. Like, look, he's smiling there. <laughs> and then all the photographers started laughing, and I'm like, what just happened? Do you know what? I think I can't psychoanalyze people, but I just think it's so romantic and charming it. and beautiful. Yeah. I think a lot of us are just like, oh, how it's, beautiful. That's friendship. We have all been locked in our houses for so long. <laughs> you know, when this video went viral, I was like, people just need to see people touch. Yes. That's, that's, that's yes. a good point. And that's why you should watch scenes from America. There you go. Oh, trust me, people will watch. Yeah. Yeah. And, and another project you've got coming up that we are all excited about, The Eyes of Tammy Faye. Mm -hmm. yes. What was it like stepping into that role? Oh, my gosh. it was the, That was the scariest and most difficult part I've ever played. Really? Mm. Yeah, because I'm singing, I'm preaching, I'm, you know, I have all this this tr physical transformation. She's from International Falls, Minnesota, so there's an accent. Mm. Her voice is super high. I mean, her energy level is like at a... 15 and from 1 to 10 she's a 15 all the time so yeah it was a it was a big leap of faith and what about the, the makeup side to yeah. it I mean it must have been just so it's just so much how, how did you transform into her well I had the help of an incredible uh, makeup team and, and, and hair team and prosthetics team and and the longest we worked was seven and a half hours wow. on makeup on makeup and I remember my very first day of shooting it was um, uh, my pickup was 3.30 in the morning. Mm. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Which you guys are probably... That's what I'm saying. Yes. That's like yeah. But we're not in hair and makeup for seven hours. <laughs> so, hey, you know, I'm not spending that yeah. time. Yeah. That's Monday through yeah. Friday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Jessica, it's so nice it's to see you. Thanks for coming Thank in. Thank you. Kidding me? I, I really just have to, that. like, try to get back Same to normal people. again. I know. I mean, we're I want to also throw my arms around everyone. We'll get there. Great. Eventually. Yeah. All right, Thank Jessica. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you. And Scenes from a Marriage premieres September 12th on HBO. You guys, welcome back to Today in 30 on Today All Day. We got a lot for you this Trans Day Wednesday. We're talking Kylie Jenner pregnancy, Olivia Munn with a bun in the oven, and the Marvel movie that is breaking records. You won't believe all this drama. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So, it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Good morning, welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are. <laughs> <laughs> today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Stay connected and stream the news you need with Xfinity X5. Our top story is unfolding right now. The fast speed you depend on and a reliable connection for all your devices, whenever and however you watch with Xfinity X5. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus comes back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. It's one of our favorite times of the week when we get to say hello to our pal Justin Sylvester. Yeah, he's up bright and early for us in L.A. with all the Trends Day Wednesday fun you can handle. Justin, before we begin this, I have to say something. <laughs> yeah. I saw the movie Marry Me with Jennifer Lopez and Owen Wilson and who was in the movie? It's not going to be released for several months. Babe, you are a scene stealer. You rocked it. Justin, are you blushing? Justin, I can't believe it. You are amazing. 
People say I'm going to be nominated for an Oscar. Well, you, there's, a, there's a good, you, by the way, I have to tell you, you were great. And I was so proud. There was, so, I had like such a proud mom moment. I was like, look at Justin. He did it. Oh my God. I love you. I love you. It's all about proud moms today on Trends Day Wednesday, oh, as you know. Look yeah, at you trying us. to pivot away yeah, from the wonderful you. We want to hear more you. about your acting debut, but tell us about this baby news. You guys, Kylie Jenner finally confirmed what fans have been speculating for weeks. She is expecting baby number two with Travis Scott. Now, if you recall for Stormy, the baby practically told us herself when she was walking into pre-K <laughs> that her mom was pregnant because she kept it such a secret. But KJ oh. posted this sweet video montage of her oh, pregnancy so oh. far, taking Stormy to the doctor, her growing baby bump. Oh, Even the moment she told Kris Jenner that she was gonna be a grandma mother for the tenth time. Take a look at this. Oh, what is this? Wait a second. Are you pregnant? Oh, we're gonna have a baby. This is one of the happiest days of my life. Oh, so sweet. sweet. How cute is that? Yeah, and nobody looks like that. She looks so elegant pregnant. I if I took a shot like that, it wouldn't look like <laughs> oh, that way. But Kylie's not the only one expecting like that. Else? The worst kept secret in Hollywood, but her boyfriend, comedian John Mulaney, confirmed the news last night on Seth Meyers. Now, if you're a fan of Jan John's like I am, you know he's had one crazy year. He went to rehab last fall. He split from his wife of seven years. He met Olivia, and now he's expecting his first First child with her. But the good news, John told Seth that Olivia and this baby have helped save me from myself in this early journey out of recovery. And for that, I just want to tell Olivia live on TV, I'm holding this one for you, sis. We're going to crack it open in nine months. No, oh, and Olivia, by the way, is such fun. She's I, still the best. I still remember when she was here one day, she was a guest co hosting and she slammed a whole beer straight down. I remember She's laughing so awesome. in hysterics. She's, congratulations yes, to her. Yes, we're so happy for her. All and right. there's a superhero movie that's breaking records. Okay, you guys know that the only thing making millions in this pandemic was Jeff Bezos. That's until Shang-Chi starring Chinese Canadian actor Simu Liu came out wow. and dominated the box wow, office, setting a new record for Labor Day with a four day haul of $94 million. I mean, Charmin didn't even make that in the great <laughs> two-ply shortage of 2020, okay? <laughs> so, like, I mean, it's crazy, and this is also making history as Marvel's first big screen Asian superhero. It's insane. Well, but you wanna know the best part of the story? What? what? Okay, you know how every Hollywood actor has a come up? Some actors work as extras, waiters, male exotic dancers. You wouldn't guess what this man did for money. What? What? In 2014, he did a stock photo shoot for 120 bucks. He signed away all rights to the photos because he was so broke. <laughs> Years later, they have shown up in ads, <laughs> textbooks, and storefronts all over the world. The man could have made six figures on all of these photos. He's going to make he plenty. Yeah. Don't you worry. He's going to yeah, make he's gonna get plenty. Justin, just Thank the way you, you will when the movie Marry Me comes out. <laughs> Justin, it's good seeing you, honey. Congrats. It's good Justin. to see you too. Can we watch? Can we all watch yes. the movie together? Let's watch yes, it. We can. Justin, thank you. And don't forget to catch Daily Pop Weekends on our sister network, E! We hope that you're going to come back for another great morning tomorrow on today. Mike Tirico, he'll yes. be here to kick off Thursday night football. Oh, on we NBC. are so ready Pumped. for some football. Can't wait. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.